Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know you've got something more inside you. You've got Michael Jordan level genius at something. So today, let's live your best belief life and get some incredible motivation from the one and only Grant Cardone. Enjoy. Every business, I have five companies now, we'll do 100 million this year. I started every one of those companies with no money. Zero money, man, just hustle and grit and courage. I've called on people I didn't want to be with. I've done things I didn't want to do, okay? It is not about doing what you love. It's about doing whatever it takes to make your dreams a reality, to be closed and stay closed. If you're not closed on your product, if you're not buying your own product, why would you expect anybody else to? Man, 400 bucks is a lot of money. Your prospect says to you, $400, do it. Listen to me, man. You're 32 years old. You've been trying to save money for 20 years and you hadn't. Do it and do it now. I don't need anything special here. I'm not gonna be empathetic. Quit being stupid, write the check. I don't know if the compliance guy likes that or not. But I know this, look, if you believe in what you're selling, how many of you believe in what you're selling? Then close the deal, then close the deal, okay? Learn to close and you'll never be without work, you'll never be without money, you'll have an organization that is booming in affluence. You'll have a pipeline full, you'll have appointments filled up, right? I call it, a, a, a group called me yesterday, I'm actually trying to do a deal with CNBC and the guy says, I'm interested, I said, good, I'll be there tomorrow. Call me back. I'll be, I, I'm flying into New York tomorrow. What am I trying to do right now? By the way, I was supposed to be here. Today. I'll fly into New York tomorrow. I can be there tomorrow, Mr. Ackerman. Okay, how does that work? I can't do tomorrow. I was going to be here anyway, man. I'm trying to close the deal. Let me close the deal. I'll figure out how to be in two places at one time later. Right? You, some of you in the room are like, Hey, I can see you at four o'clock on Tuesday, right? And, and the customer says to you, I'll, I'll see you at four o'clock on Tuesday. Too. Let me look at my calendar. Like, like, you're so busy. Dude, that is so old. That is so old. And it's dishonest. It's dishonest, man. You want to see me Tuesday, four o'clock? I give you Tuesday at four o'clock. Agree to it. Done. Done. I'll call you if something changes. If there's an earthquake, between now and next Tuesday. Tuesday morning, there's a massive earthquake and I can't be there. You think everybody will understand? Commit first, figure the rest out later. Close the deal right now. Fill your calendar up. Your calendar's got the devil all over it. White space on a calendar and you will meet the devil. You don't need to die, okay? You go two or three days without anything going on, how many of you start having doubts? You're in hell. This isn't gonna work for me. There's nobody coming in. I'm not gonna hit my target. Okay, I know what I'll do. I'll lower my target. Yeah, that's the devil doing that, man. That's a criminal. Never ever, if you're taking notes, never lower a target. Never lower a target. Never lower a target. Your mom and dad would tell you to lower a target. A manager might tell you to lower a target. Be reasonable. Be reasonable with yourself. Just bring it down a little bit. No, man. Criminal products are created like that. A guy sees the girl that he wants. That's the girl. She says no, he goes to another girl. Right? Gave up on his dream. If you're gonna give up on your own dream, how are you gonna build an organization? You will never, ever experience great change in your life unless you're willing to give up something that you have right now. Every single time in my life, I have had to give up something I wanted. So, I'm not talking about getting rid of the bad stuff. You gotta get rid of something that you actually work for to get. Might have been the house. It might have been, oh, my kids are in the best schools now. It, it's gonna be something painful for you to get to the next place. You have to give up something that you worked for really, really hard. So I sold my house. One day I had this cognition. Hey, to get what you want, you have to give up what you have. That has been true for me throughout my entire life. I had to leave Lake Charles, Louisiana. Went, went to Houston, had to leave Houston once I got comfortable with my community and my friends. Had to leave San Diego, had to go to LA. LA is a pit compared to La Jolla. Nobody goes from La Jolla, California up to Los Angeles. 
Nobody does that. You'll leave Kansas City to go to Los Angeles because you want to be an actor. I met Elena within five minutes of arriving in LA. I sold my house. I sold my house. I didn't leave it vacant as a backup plan. I had left this house, okay? Like I couldn't buy this house today if I wanted to. It was so like it was a precious little treasure. I had to give that up. By the way, I had to give up being the mayor of my little town. Everybody knew me. There wasn't a restaurant I couldn't walk into. I could always get a seat. I could always get the best seat. I had it right in my hand. This is what I'm telling you guys. You have to be willing to give something up. And the moment you do, you better have your partner on your side. Whoever's in your life, mom, whoever's the big influence, that significant other person in your life, that you're gonna consult, that everybody's gonna consult. Every one of you are gonna, hey, what do you think, should I? You better have that person on your side. In my case, I was by myself. So my consultant was like, you gonna do this, dog? I called my buddy, Dale. Dale, you think I should? He's like, you're miserable, bro. You got everything you want and you're miserable. He's like, what, what do you have to risk? Sold the house, went to Los Angeles, lived in a hotel. I went from a, a house on the ocean to living in a hotel. Uh, the hotel room was probably like, I don't know, maybe the size of the stage. So please, please do whatever you gotta do this weekend to figure out whatever you gotta do to get rid of whatever is holding you back, most of which is something you worked hard to get, okay? Maybe before the weekend's over, you could write down two or three or four things you worked really hard to get that you think you're supposed to keep. You got them already. You got it. You already did that. You don't have to keep it. One thing that I've done since I was 25 years old is learn how to set goals, put them in place, and then manifest them over periods of time in my lifetime. If you go back and listen to the rules of success that I shot that show in, I think I was 40, 35 years old, 36 years old in La Jolla, California. I was living on the ocean then. And... You can go back to that. You can look in the 10X rule. When I wrote the 10X rule, I shared a bunch of goals. That was 11 years ago. You can see over the last 25 years, every single goal that I have set for myself, up to this point anyway, I have been able to achieve. My wife, my two beautiful kids, the condition that my body's in today, my finances, the real estate, all of it started with goals. All of it started with the idea that was in my mind and had not yet been manifested in reality. I heard a saying once, uh, Barbara Streisand said that there was not one thing in her career that she had accomplished. Tips on writing goals. Number one, write them down every day. In fact, what I do is I write mine down on a blank sheet of paper. I write them down in the AM. I write them down in the PM. And I also write them down anytime I'm disappointed or discouraged. Okay, so I could actually write my goals down more than twice a day. Always in the a.m., always in the p.m. First thing I do in the morning, first thing I did today was I wrote my goals down. Second thing, what I'll do before I go to sleep tonight is write my goals down. It could be on the same legal pad. Second thing, I write them down in present tense, in P.T., Present tense or even past tense or past, okay? So I may write it as though I have accomplished it. What you don't want to do is uh, write it down, one day I will love my job, okay? You want to write down, I love my job. Even if you hate your job right now, just like flip it, I love my job, okay? I love my wife and kids. I didn't have a wife and kids. Uh, my kids love me. I didn't have any children, okay? I wrote it down as though it was happening, Okay, um, write your goals down whether or not you're achieving them or not. It doesn't matter that you're achieving them, okay? This is gonna sound a bit like you're deceiving yourself, which is what you're doing. You're, you're writing down the future as though it's happening today and or has happened. Number four, strongly suggest that you go 10 times bigger on your goals than you think what is accomplishable. Okay, I say go big or go bigger, baby. Okay, go big or go bigger. There is nothing wrong with big think. It doesn't cost anything, okay? You can't get taxed for thinking big. And it's not just, okay, I'm gonna dream big and big things are gonna happen, okay? I am going to uh, write down, hey, I'm trying to achieve X in my life. I'm trying to go from here to 10 times bigger than I can think. 
Okay, during the day, I'm gonna take the actions that support that when I write this down every day. Number five, do not be disappointed in not achieving, just keep writing. Just because you're not hitting it, just keep writing it. Uh, I wrote down, off and on, from time to time, I wrote down for years. My dad worked his ass off, and when he died, he did good. My mom had to sell everything. Mm. And so I'm like, okay, that didn't work. But he was considered successful, the middle class successful, briefcase, mm -hmm. good job, professional, people respected him, saved his money, had life insurance, house was paid for, everything by the book. And she was unloading stuff the next week because she was terrified. And so from the age of 10 to like 16, 17 years old, fuck, we were just scared, dude. Mm -hmm. Clipping coupons, buying everything on sale, Single mother, everywhere she goes, she knows they're going to rip her off. The plumber, the mm. roofer, the car dealer, everybody's going to rip her off. Right. So she thought, save your money, save for a rainy day. Yeah. Right. You know, a penny saved is. Right, yeah. a penny earned. It's yeah. not. It's a f***ing penny. Yeah. Right. It's a f***ing penny. Yeah. I mean, it's a penny, dude. Yes. You won't even pick a penny up today. You ain't sh with a penny. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, 50 cent? Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's 50 pennies, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people say the dumbest things. It could be family. It could be your wife, your husband. It could be a, a mom, a dad, an uncle, an aunt. It could be your kids coming from school. People say what they think. And what they think will be what they say. And what they say and think often enough, long enough, reinforced enough, I promise you, will be what they do. Okay? So look at some of the dumb things you say like this. Here's one dumb thing people say. Time heals all things. Really. You get a splinter in your foot and you don't pull the splinter out. You don't look at it, confront it, and say, I got to pull that little booger out. I got to pull that little splinter out. If you just leave it there, you might get used to it. Yeah, you'll get used to it. 30 years goes by, you still got a splinter in your foot. Who knows that splinter gets into your bloodstream, goes to your heart, spikes your heart, kills you. Time does not heal all things, folks. You know what heals all things? Taking a look at it. Having the courage to look at it. Hey, what happened to me? How did I screw up here? What, what hurt or what pain or what happened that I had a loss? I see people go through life with all these losses, unwilling to look at them, all crippled by the time they get older, not old, but they looking old, because they believe that time heals. Look, time heals when you confront it, when you look at it, when you pull the splinter out and take responsibility for it. Don't believe everything you believe. You know what I'm saying? Because some of the ideas you got, they just dumb. And dumb things will cause you to do dumb things. Look, if you're 50 years old and you're hearing this message right now and you're like, man, how could I ever do that? I started my game when I was 51 years old. Literally. I was 51 years old. I had flown 3 million miles on American and Delta and United and Continental and Flumo and Southwest and Northwest, I flew them all. Did whatever I had to do. Most of the time I was flying coach. Most of the time I was flying coach in order and hoping for an upgrade. Uh, sometimes I was just flying on award miles. I was doing everything I could, busting my ass, saving my money, parking my dough. I was flying, I don't know, probably 125,000 miles a year. I barely saw Elena. And Elena and I got sat down one morning. We didn't have any kids yet. Boy, my right arm started to get tired. Hold on. And uh, we said, hey, we got to change the game, man. Uh, I'm going to destroy my life, my health. He's 51 years old, buying commercial everywhere. And literally, we got on the same page, came up with a plan. Here we are today. I'm so like, proud of you. Yeah, thank you. If you're over 50 years old, and you're hearing this message right now, and you, you're not where you want to be. Maybe you're married. Maybe your marriage is paying a price right now. You're busting your ass, man. And you're like, how do I ever get ahead? You see these people on these planes over here? Thank you. you see these people on these planes? You're like, how do they do that? Look, you got to figure out one, or you committed. Because a lot of you are just going to give up. You're going to be like, like I used to do that. You'd be like, this. it's impossible to ever have this. Impossible. So number one, you gotta be like, hey, it is possible. If I can do it, you can do it. If they can do it, if they can do it, 
look, it's possible. So first you got to say, hey, it's possible for me if it's possible for them. How did you get started? Like, what was your first company? What did it look like? How, how did all that happen? My first company was working for somebody else, you know, like until uh, it wasn't until I figured out how to make somebody else rich that I could be, be rich. Like, I hear a lot of guys saying, oh, I don't, I don't want to work for somebody else. I don't want to keep making other people. When I became successful in another company, and then left that company and went and worked for another company and made them super successful to the point to where these companies were literally dependent upon me. Like that, that, that's the thing, that's the muscle and the grit, the, the uh, pers persistence and fortitude of like, you know what, I don't, my ego wasn't like, I need my name on it, but my ego was strong enough to say, I wanna be the best in the company. Like, I want to make this company dependent upon me. The first company, the first real job I had was my sixth job. I was fired from my first five. Fired from my sixth job six times, but wouldn't leave the last one. I just would not leave. So literally, like, I wreck stuff. I, I have a, t a terrible driving record, and I, and I was in the car business. And I'd wreck their cars, and, and they'd fire me. And I'd say, okay, okay, okay. And I had a bunch of other problems as well, but... And then before I would leave, I would go sell something and then they would keep me on. If selling something was always forgiveness. So um, when I finally left that company, they went under. Like they could, my production was so high that one person leaving, the entire company failed. Went to my next job, which was speaking, consulting, using my sales um, philosophies and gifts, if you will. Uh, and we would go around companies and teach them. And I worked for him for 20 months. I was like the top guy in his company. Now, the, the reason I'm saying that is that was a job for me and that was a business. I treated that little, my little department like this is my company within a company. And, and I wanted to make that company as strong as possible so that when I, made, when I finally went out on my own, which I was forced to go out on my own, I, I didn't want to go out on my own. I went out on my own just because there was just no opportunity left. And there, there was no way for me to score where I was which I, I still remember today. It's important to get good people to keep them, that like you gotta give them some other pond to, to, to swim in. And so when I started my first company, uh, I guess I was 29, um, that was a company where I was cold calling on businesses around the US and Canada. I can tell you, for me, like I was always scared of money, you know, and, and I was terrified of it. So, so like if you look at, still today, like I look at the bill of everything, it's a bill of everything. If something costs something, I want to know how much it was. Uh -huh. And so, like, how much is it? Like, I'm going to ask that question, whether whether it matters or not. I'm, it doesn't matter where I get in my life. I, I don't think I'm ever going to be free of how much was that? How much was the dinner? How much? Was how much this? was dinner? How much was the tip? How much was the coat? How much was the jacket? What did the, you know? Me, uh, me and Elena. Like Elena's like, hey, it's going to be fine, man. Like, look what, look, 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 look at what you've done. We cannot spend this. And I'm like, how much was it? I want to know how much it was because when I grew up, do you had to know what things cost? Mm -hmm. And so the point you're, you're questioning about money is is a terrifying thing because. It's the one thing in life that, you know, the NFL is not going to give me the ball. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm never going to get a chance to golf. I can't win in those environments. But with money, everybody gets money. It's the one place where everybody gets it. And now what do I do? Mm -hmm. And I, I can lose it now. So it's a terrifying concept, like, like power. You know, very few of us ever, ever get any kind of influence or power, right? Once you get it, you're like, hey, what do I do with this? You know, am I going to do it? I'm gonna, am I going to do the right things with it? Mm -hmm. And so I think people withhold themselves because they don't, we're not educated about money. We don't know where it comes from. We have a lot of misinformation about it. Our parents terrified us. You know, money doesn't grow in trees. Uh, save your money, it'll save you. All these, these, these things our parents told us because they were enamored mm -hmm. uh, or, or encumbered with the same kind of liabilities around money. Right. I don't know how to get it. I don't know how to keep it. And the, th the third, the worst part that we're all at is I don't know how to invest it. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll, some people get good at getting it. Very few actually. Fewer people at keeping it, but probably more than getting it. Mm -hmm. There's probably a big group in America that have learned how to keep money. Because they're afraid to lose it. They so don't want to invest it. it. They don't want to use it. They don't want to, you know, um, you know, Kanye talks about this, how white people, how white people save all their money. 
and they just keep it. They just store it. Like I had a, an uncle, he buried everything he ever made. Really? It went in the backyard. Wow. The other uncle was, was um, he was he was a guy that bought, he, he, he worked hard, very, very frugal, Italian descent, mm-hmm. and he would uh, buy, buy real estate, but it was always buy low and sell high. He actually never sold anything, but that was the concept, buy low. Buy the cheapest, lowest, get everything on a deal. If there's food stamps to be gotten, you go get those food stamps. If there's a if there's a government deal, get it. If it's Section Eight and the government will pay you, pay it. So both these guys, different kind of mentalities, were extremely frugal. Mm-hmm. My other uncle was uh, worked in a refinery. He basically saved all his money, paid everything off, got out of debt. That was their lifestyle. My dad died when I was ten. So he paid all his debt off, had everything paid, and and so that's all I had. Right, everybody around me was like, get money. Keep it. Keep yeah. it. Don't use it, you know, but you, but you should invest, but nobody ever learns that third one. Mm-hmm. And and so I think we're just a bunch of people walking around terrified of this this apparent apparency of it's scarce. Right. And it's not. Mm-hmm. And, 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 you know, it's not there's nothing scarce about it. You know, I'm always keeping it real with you. What has happened to our country that we make our idols and our icons and our heroes rappers and entertainers and ball players, and then we show disgust for a businessman that can bank fifty million a year or twenty million a year? What is wrong? Look, when a guy can go out and make passive investments, great decisions, execute, show tremendous discipline. Okay, and disconcert between good investments and bad investments and then make 20 million or 30 million bucks, pay three or four million dollars in taxes, three or four million dollars to his charities, his churches, his community helps out with groups of people. And and we have discontent for the businessman that's out there year after year making great investments, great decisions, showing leadership in the marketplace. Look, that marketplace out there, that economy is the most savage most difficult playing field in the world to negotiate. Yet, who do we admire in our culture? Rock stars? Look, these guys got great skills. Kid gets out of school, makes 12 million a first year, and, and we make posters of them in sweatshirts. And, and you put their kids in their jerseys. But what about the business people that make our economy work? that pay the taxes, that make the schools work, the churches work, that make the the fire department, the police department because they pay taxes, because they're out there making great investments. Look, admire business people that are able to bank year after year. Admire these people, study them, learn from them. Don't be disgusted with them and turn off anybody, anybody that would suggest to you that making money in this country is wrong. Look, don't envy business people. Admire them, emulate them, learn from them. Particularly these guys are doing it year after year after year, not just on income, but on wealth development, because that's where you need to be. That's where you need to be thinking. That's the economy you want to create for yourself, your family, your household, and your future. You should be investing in yourself. Some of you got more money in Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Citibank, than you do in yourself. Your self-improvement is a no-brainer, okay? There's no money, no, nothing, nothing that I, no book I've ever read that somebody can take away from me. It's impossible. Give me one piece of data that's good for me. Give me one experience that's positive for me. No one can steal it. You can't tax it, and it cannot be depreciated. See, 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 like I got no money on me right now. How many of you saw Undercover Billionaire? Yeah, you should, you should take a look if those of you didn't see it. You don't need money to make money. Okay, you need people. As long as, you, as long as you're willing to extrovert yourself into the community and meet people. Hey, how you doing? What's up? Who are you? I'm a guy. Like, you, you don't even know how to do it right. You just need to be like, hey, what's up? Everybody try this. What's up? What's up? No, no, what's up? what's up? See? People can be like, what's wrong with him? You should practice that this weekend. Every time you go to the restroom or go to the bar, hey, how you doing? Hey, 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 how you doing? Who? Hey. <laughs> What's up? You know, just say hi to people. Just get used to extroverting yourself onto people because people that you don't know have everything that you want. And it's going to make you feel better about you. You got to go out and earn money, period. Well, you don't really need to earn it. You just need to collect it. You need to get it. 
when you go around the money game, you got to remember this, okay? There is no shortage of money on planet Earth. There is no shortage of success on planet Earth. There's more money than there is people. There's more money than there are trees. There's more money than there are phones, and there's a lot of phones on this planet. There's more money than there is TV shows. Like, you can't pick anything. And by the way, anytime there's more of something than there is money, they just print more money. Money is printed. You don't need to make it. You need to collect it. You need to collect it. You need to earn it. You need to get it. So when you do your money target, okay, the next thing you're going to connect to is how do I get this money? And that will always be about the who. How to get money is about people. It is not about some idea. It's not about I'm going to create an app. I'm going to manufacture something. It's not even about I'm going to solve a problem, even though you hear that all the time. It's about how, who, who can help me solve my how. You understand? Who has my money? Who's got my money? Who's got your money? Who's got your million, 10 million? Who's got your kids' college tuition? Who's got your... Christmas gifts, who's got your Halloween uh, costume, whatever the case. You know, this concept of time management has been pushed off on me my entire life. And I have never, ever agreed with it. I'm like, why would I want to manage time? Why would I, what am, what am I going to do? How, do? how do you manage time? What do I do? i like, okay, I'm going to watch these seconds. Dude, I don't want to manage time. I want to produce. I want to be highly productive. I want to squeeze time. I literally want to take time and I want to turn 60 minutes into three hours of production. That's the different thing that you need today, not manage time. Now, there are some tricks when managing time, if that's where you want to come from, like Alan Greenspan. Alan Greenspan and his roommate in college, his roommate's father taught Alan Greenspan a little trick that Alan Greenspan used his whole life and it was to break up the day into 15 minute blocks. 15 minutes, I have something, and then fill up the next 15 minutes. Now the reason Alan did that, and I like that concept a lot, is because he didn't want white space on that calendar. He knew white space was a problem because white space, nothing in the 15 minutes is a waste of time. See, before you start thinking about just managing time, first I want you to do this. Number one, I want you to make a list of things that you're doing every day that is a waste of time. That is the way you create time, not manage it. The first thing I want to do is look at things that I'm doing that are wasteful, those two or three hours a day that are wasteful moments. Things I'm doing on Facebook that just are a waste of time, or maybe a game I'm playing that's a waste of time, or maybe a newspaper I'm reading where I'm not really learning anything, I'm reading about the, the celebrities. It's a waste of time. Okay, second thing I want you to do is this. I want you to then start thinking about these 15 minute blocks and filling that calendar up. But the third and most important thing I want you to think about is how can you create time? How can you literally take 24 hours and, and pack more into it so that you can become more productive, so that you can use that urgency concept and really blow up your, your career, blow up your life, make the most incredible life for your family, for you, for the kids, for your wife, for your husband, and for your clients so that you can take care of yourself materially as well. 12 years ago, we had done maybe, I don't know, $20 million over the internet. We've done over a billion dollars in sales over the internet in the last 12 years, okay? Thank you. Like, you guys got to learn how to use enthusiasm. Like, when you use it, use it. Like, the more you use, the more you get. You're like, I'm going to save my energy now. I don't want to give him too big a hand too early. It's really early today. Come on. Look, man, when somebody's successful, you ought to throw down. That's what I'm talking about. See, you guys, you guys got to, y'all got to, y'all got to quit trying little tricks and gimmicks. Like, if you got to walk on fire to get excited, you are cramped up. Like, like if you can't at will, whenever you want to, for any reason, just get excited, then you got a problem, okay? Because in, real, in the real world, you can't, you can't be in the middle of a meeting and I'm trying to get her to give me like $100 million and I'm, not, I'm feeling a little depressed or bad right now or I got my attention on my kids and, and I'm like, okay. Everybody's gonna be like, nah, we were gonna give you the 100 until you started pumping your chest. Right? You can't say, hang on a second, man. I got to go into a state change. Like, that's not real. You guys understand? You have to be able to, that's a gimmick. And gimmicks take time. 
okay? And gimmicks cannot be duplicated. What can be duplicated are disciplines. And that's what you're gonna be, we're gonna be sharing with you over the next three days. Disciplines can be duplicated. If you've seen my children, okay? If you've, how many of you have seen Sabrina and Scarlett? Oh, yeah. Those are disciplines, okay? If they were in here right now, they could get on that stage and talk to you. They know how to look you in the eyes. They know how to shake your hand because they have been taught how to communicate. We spend less time on teaching them how to count than we do communicate, connect with people, okay? We have them homeschooled. The homeschool teacher, what do you want them to learn? You just keep teaching them what I'm teaching them. You teach them confidence. You teach them poise. You teach them the ability to communicate. Be dangerous, not careful, okay? We teach our kids how to be dangerous. I, I teach my kids how to meet strangers and greet strangers. We teach our kids that strangers have everything they want and strangers are not dangerous, okay? Is there danger in the society? Yeah, that's what those guys are for over there. So I'm gonna put my kids in an environment where they can meet 99% of the people and feel safe to meet them, talk to them, communicate with them. So I wanna make sure that my kids can walk into an environment and have zero concern about him, her, or him. And they can walk out and say, hey, I want to meet you because strangers have everything that you want. The people you don't know and haven't met. These guys, these guys dressed in their robes. What do you call the robes? The condor. OK, I have one in my closet, by the way. I love the condor. I put the condor on one time and I was like, I'm a bad, bad man. <laughs> Dude, I felt so freaking powerful. It was amazing. OK, I grew a beard. I'm like, now I'm a man. OK, <laughs> give me a camel. Okay, it was like it was like phenomenal, right? Like, but but you you guys need to have that kind of swag everywhere in life. And regardless of how old you are, 25 and you're like, I'm too young to have swag, or 55 and now you're too old, it's not true. You just need to get the confidence, the bravado, not fake it. You don't need to fake it. You need to you need to get you need to get confidence. If I could get rid of this right here in life, if I could get rid of these downs, man, how confident would I be? I mean, like I'm going into every deal, I'm a win. And that is possible, folks, okay? But it starts with who knows me? Because if I'm walking around this planet and nobody knows me, I'm gonna be terrified. Be a better guy, man. I mean, you yeah. know, just be a good guy and be, be, you know, the thing I'm proud of is I get to be Grant all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm actually getting to the point where I'm like, hey man, I, I finally got to be what I, I, I finally became what I wanted to be. Mm. What you was know? that? Me. Yeah. You know, that, that I don't have to apologize anymore and that I quit mm. screwing up and I quit having to call people and say, hey man, I, I said I went too far, you know. If I could just pull some of that back without that drug that that, that psychiatrist was trying to use. Right. You know, that if I'm less dependent upon aggression, you know, and I could I could kind of manifest more, you know, like you, you talk about. Let it, let it flow more. Let yeah. it flow, dude, yeah. let it flow, you know, but. But if I could get that perfect balance of aggression and flow. <laughs> That's a sweet you know, spot, yeah. It's sweet, dude. It's hard to find that thing. That's a sweet too. spot. You know, to be that, I don't want to be, I, want, I don't want to be the little stream that drips. You know, I want to be like, mm -hmm. but I don't want to damage anybody. Right. I don't want to hurt anybody. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to be in competition anymore. Mm -hmm. But I also don't want to lose the edge. Right. You know? <laughs> it's a dance. It, dude, it's a dance. It's a dance, man. You know? Like, like your girl said to me the other night, she's like, she said something before she left. She's like, I really get who you are. Mm. You know, that, and that hits me. Mm. When people say that to me, most people don't get who I am. Mm. That's beautiful. You know, and then she said, I really get who you are. Yeah. And, and, and a lot of people don't. Yeah. And, and it, sometimes it hurts, right? Because I know who I really am. Yeah. And, but I also know the things I'm trying to accomplish for me. You know, like Ryan, Ryan gets who I am, mm. you know? Ryan, Ryan never takes me on. Man, you're you're the best, Grant. You're the best. <laughs> he just he strokes me right right yeah, through yeah. it. And 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 you know my wife, I can see my wife. She gets she gets tired of the 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 pounding, you know. But hey, man, I just you know I'm a right handed hitter, you know. Yeah. Or I got I got a certain ball that I throw, a yeah. certain shot I make, and yeah. it's my go to, you know. And when when I get threatened, I'm gonna go to that. And now, if I could develop some other set of skills, mm -hmm. you know, that would be that would be a cool thing. The thing is not to just be positive, not even to offer this no negativity policy that I talk about. The way to avoid uh, negative and distracting people, man, is to vibrate at a rate so fast. 
okay, that you're out in front of them. Once I got a speeding ticket, actually here in Miami, and the, and the police officer says, well, well, why are you speeding? Why are you in such a hurry? I'm like, dude, I'm trying to stay away from the crazies, okay? If I can just get ahead of everybody else, I'm not distracted by anybody but guys like you. And your job is to stop me, but the truth is their job is to stop me, distract me, and cause me to turn around and, and, and stop my mission. See, so I got my ticket and moved on and went to the head of the pack again. See, this is what I'm telling you, man. Look, if you want to not be bogged down by negative, distracted people, you need to take responsibility that you're slowing down enough to get caught up by this magnetic charge of distractive and negative people. Do you need to vibrate so fast that these people are distracting other people, not you? Get way ahead of the crowd. Get so busy that nobody's going to jack with you, man, because you're filling up your pipeline. You're full. You're busy. And you don't have this stuff sticking to you. Look, if you got negative people around you, if you got distracted people, and we all do, but if it's causing you to be distracted and negative, dude, you need to vibrate. You need to fill up your pipeline. You need to explode, blow up, get busy. So this isn't happening to you because you're partly responsible. Fill your pipeline up. What are you willing to give up? You guys got to keep assessing the situation and not be, not be broad stroke about it and say, oh, I'm not going to be a dilettante or I'm going to be a professional. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to. No, no, but what are you going to give up? There are times, though, again, when I will give up that agreement. See, like one of the things I have on here, being right. You have to give up being right. You know, you can't can't want to be, be be right and be successful. They don't, they don't even go together. It's impossible. So again, I'm willing to give up being right. I just gotta don't quit, man. If you don't quit, if you don't quit, you can't fail. It's impossible. Failure becomes impossible for those that don't quit. It's impossible. Just think about it. If I keep moving towards the destination, if I if I'm if I'm going through the alphabet, A B C D E, dude. If you just keep going all the way to Z, you finish the alphabet. Break your leg along the way, somebody cuts your tongue out, you get waterboarded, you get a divorce, you lose your dad, you lose a puppy. If you get the Z, you finish the alphabet. Period. And boy, when I heard that, I'm like, God damn, what was I thinking? I was thinking I could fail. I can't fail if I don't quit. So so that means I gotta get rid, I gotta dump people out of the car though along the way, right? But we had to get rid of a whole bunch of people. I, I have to get rid of people. How many people have, been, have gone, Johnny? Huh? I mean, guys, like if you saw the wreckage, like so many, you don't see it, you know? Or, or, I'm not saying get rid of people. I'm just saying like, 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 what are you willing to give up? Okay, on my list, I've given up a house. I've given up money. I gave up my retirement accounts. I had millions of dollars sitting in retirement accounts. I paid the penalty to get the money because it was a mistake years ago. I got convinced by the banks to build an IRA or a 401k because I was trying to figure out how to exit. Actually, the people that were giving me the advice were telling me to figure out how to exit. You're planning an exit when you're 30, and it's stupid. Think about what you're doing. You're not going to retire until you're 70, and the rich people never worry about their retirement accounts. Warren Buffett has not got a 401k. He's got Coca-Cola. See the difference? See the difference in the think, okay? So, so like, like you, you guys have to take a look at what you know that is now a liability. What you know to be true that has become a liability for you. And if you just study the middle class of America, study the entire structure of a, the American economy, you will see you will see where a lot of these liabilities exist that, that are, 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 are core values that you have. Not just for you, but for the entire population of people. And, and like if you just look at the structure of America, 311 million people, most of them are not doing well. You hear about it every day. So the solution is let's give everybody college. You know? Let's give everybody college. Well, college could be one of the problems. Look, you know, let's make sure everybody gets through high school. Okay. Could be one of the problems, actually, that it takes 12 years to learn how to count. And still no product, really. 
So anyway, I'm not saying, I'm not worried about try, trying to change all that. I'm just saying, you might want to look at how some of that has influenced you. You know, the retirement accounts, the life insurance. How many of you got life insurance? How many of you got some cash value sitting there, some hope? Dude, get the money. Don't wait till you die. The third thing I would say about wealthy people is they're, I mean, different people have different ways they invest, but they tend to be more focused on the long-term appreciation of an asset rather than give me money this second. And, and I think the get, they're, they're, they're not stuck in this get rich quick thing. It's a delayed gratification. Yeah, they're more like, yeah, I'd rather have wealth tomorrow than rich today. Mm. And, and they do have a distinction between the rich and the wealthy. The, the, you know, the super wealthy are looking to create wealth beyond their own means and needs. Like they're not thinking about their kids, their boat, their plane. I know people think that, but that's not actually true. They're actually thinking about how do I create wealth for a, a lot of people? Amazon's got a million employees. Yeah. Uh, now, most of them only earn minimum wage, but there's some people at the upper level of Amazon that are making fortunes. Success is vital. I have, so you, maybe you've heard me say this before. It's worth writing down again. Success is your duty. It is your obligation and your responsibility. Success to me is as vital to my survival as oxygen, food, and water. Shelter. I got to have shelter. I got to have water. I have to have oxygen. I need food. Okay. I need love in my life. Okay. I, I need people. I need human interaction and I also need to win. If you don't have success in your life, you will lose discipline. You will lose activity. You will lose contacts and you will not be consistent. You will not have them. This is the vital part of success. This is why I'm pounding to you. The only trick in this universe, if there is a trick at all, is you must be successful. Success is not an option. It is your duty. It is your obligation. It is your responsibility. 2022, if it's going to be good for you and your family, if it's going to be great for you and your family, it is because you demand success this year. Mm -hmm. And that means you demand success in your relationships, in your finances, and in your money. Uh, your money and in your business. Your business has got to grow for your finances to grow. The reason the guys on Wall Street and the gals on Wall Street make so much money Okay, it's not because they're, they're, they're like capitalists and they're terrible people. It's because they're surrounded by people that are making money, man. They're accountable by their stock price. They're accountable to their production. They got people around them that expect them to win and do well. And also, they're going to dinner, waking up at breakfast, working out in the gym with other people that are winning big in life. Okay, so you need feedback from your environment and your network Fourth thing you need is you got to have, fifth thing you need is you got to have a network of people that are encouraging you to kill it. You got to have the right network. You got to have a LeBron in your game, man. If you're playing in the NBA and LeBron's like, I'm going to take you under my wing, bro. Okay. Kobe's like, hey, man, I wanna, I'm coming back to be with you, man. What would you deny that? Okay, Michael Jordan, I want to be with you, man. Mm -hmm. Tiger Woods, I want to golf with you. Come on, guys. What are you doing? You cannot do this alone. You cannot do this alone. Are you kidding me, man? Let's say you want to be a surgeon and, and a top surgeon in the world is like, I want to take you under my wing. What are you going to be? I, I, I'm too busy. If you're reading a book, okay, you're listening to music, going to an event, uh, speaking at an event. Let's say you're speaking at an event and it's the, it's the 700th time you did that presentation. You got to show up new again. Johnny comes to work with his camera. And we're doing a show today. Johnny needs to show up new, looking for new angles, new colors, new. You got to show up every day new, folks. You're new, man. You're new. Ladies and gentlemen, you're new. Every day you're new. Or, guess what? You're old. Nobody wants old. I don't want to get old. I don't want stale. I don't want yesterdays. I don't want leftovers. I know, I know, I know, I know when somebody's repeating something rote. They're just giving me the same. I don't mind some bullshit, but it's gotta be fresh. I need some fresh bullshit. So I don't mind, I don't mind a little bit of bullshit. I just don't want the same thing. Okay, that guy's told that story a thousand times and it looks like the thousand, thousand times. Not in a good way either. Last thing I'm gonna tell you is this, okay? Don't get stuck in mechanics. When I'm writing my goals down, I do not know how I'm going to do it. 
So I merely sit down. Like I, I remember for years I would write down, I own a helicopter. I don't even know where this concept came from. I own a helicopter. I own a helicopter. I own, I own a helicopter. Every once in a while it would show up. It would show up on a Wednesday and not show up for uh, when I'm writing my goals down, right? So I'm waking up in the morning. I wake up in the morning and I write my goals down. And one day I write, I own a helicopter. I think back then it was, uh, I, I learned how to fly a helicopter. Okay? It was stupid. It was completely ridiculous. I'm like, where did that come from? It just kind of floated into my mind. I wrote it down. Okay, I own a jet. I'm like, man, I'm just being stupid right now. I own a jet and two helicopters. I don't know how that happened. I didn't, I didn't know anything about jets. Uh, I would not achieve any of this, by the way, until I was 53 years old, 54 years old. First private jet I was ever on was the one uh, uh, we bought. I, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know how they fly. I didn't know how they work. I didn't know what the cost of a hangar was. I know nothing. Don't get lost in the mechanics. I didn't know the fuel cost. I didn't know what it cost to buy one. Do you finance them? Do you pay cash? Do you get a tax rate? I knew nothing when I started writing this down. The helicopter would come after the jet. Okay, I bought a helicopter. I didn't know why. So the point of that story is, when you're writing your goals down, literally sit down with a blank sheet of paper, first thing you wake up in the morning, and you just start zip, 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 zip. You write through them. Like th this morning I wrote down, 40 billion in real estate, okay, public. I write down one word, I'm going public. See, I know now that this, this is in present tense and or past tense. I write it in present or past tense. I'm going public, okay. I wrote down recently, uh, a congressional hearing. People are like, what, what's a congressional hearing? Dude, I'm so big now, they called me into Congress. I'm a, they're going to have a congressional hearing. They're going to drill me. Okay. Oh, yeah, then I wrote this down. Uh, a political office. Now, I don't know why. I don't know why I'm writing that down. I don't know how to achieve that. I don't know what it would mean. I don't know what it looks like. I don't get stuck in the mechanics. Don't worry about it. Commit first. Commit first, man. Just keep committing it. Keep fueling it. Keep writing it down. Eight billion people know my name. The third thing the super successful do is they master income creation. I was asked this morning. I left my home at four o'clock in the morning. I was on a plane at five. Okay, and a guy asked me, he's like, dude, why are you still cranking so hard? Because I don't have any money. I'm always broke. I reinvest all the money. Every time I get any money sitting in accounts, I take it and invest it in hard assets. Illiquid assets. Illiquid so that I cannot get that money. That's what keeps me motivated, folks. I get money, liquid money. If it's not used, what? It's useless. Take it and I buy a hard asset that produces income. I'm broke. I gotta go hustle again. I wanna share with you the uh, not so secret way that thousands, tens of thousands, actually millions of people are becoming millionaires in America. They invest in assets that appreciate over time. They invest in assets, in IPs that they control, royalties they control, things that they know over time will increase in value that there's a 99.9% 99, 99 .9 chance that they're gonna increase in value, and that's what they invest in. They don't make little bets, they make big bets, and they invest in things that they know will go up in value over time. That could be a sports team. Uh, chances you buying a sports team are next to none, same for me. So you gotta start thinking about, okay, what assets can I do that with, okay? Oh wow, I'm gonna go create, I'm gonna go create the next big thing. I'm gonna create an app, and. Hundreds of millions of people are going to download my app. Okay, chances of you doing that are, uh, your, your chances are bigger than mine because I'm not even trying. There are assets out there today that are in your backyard. They're in your neighborhood. You don't have to buy a sports team. You don't need to be connected. You don't have to have a, you don't have to know how to write code or do tech. It's sitting there waiting for you right now. And it's one of the ways that I created the wealth that I have in my life. I have, we have 11 businesses today. Uh, and and then we have a real estate portfolio of 12,000 units, going to 40,000 units, and uh, about $4 billion worth of real estate. Now, the first, the 11 businesses that I own, man, they were so hard. 
to create them, start them, manage them, guide them, hire people for them, advertise, market, get them known, like to organize it. We have hundreds and hundreds of employees in these companies, uh, about 700 employees across these companies, most of which are startups. They're brand new. They don't have a lot of employees. A lot of risk, a lot of downside, a lot of problems, a lot of headaches, a lot of people. The real estate, almost no headaches. Compared to the value of the portfolio, very few people work at it. It appreciates in value over long periods of time, and that's what wealthy people do. They invest in assets. Real estate is one of the things they love. The first three years I was in business, I made $30,000 a year. Three years, first three years. The, first, the, 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 the last year I left somebody, I was making 150, 160 grand a year. The first maybe 27 months that I was in business, I made less than 30,000 a year. I went backwards. But the, the, the problem was I was not, I do what a lot of entrepreneurs do. The mistake a lot of entrepreneurs make is, number one, they never look up the definition entrepreneur. An entrepreneur means someone is who organizes a business or businesses and invests money, takes greater than normal risk with money in order to expand or organize those businesses. I wasn't spending money on my business. Like all I was doing was knocking on doors. It was just pure effort. I wasn't spending money. Like I wouldn't spend real money until I was uh, 50, 50 years old about 10 years ago, when a, when a guy said, bro, you're not a business. And I said, what? He, and, I, and I could feel this. Yeah, I was a hustler, I was a grinder, but I wasn't a business, and I, and I could feel it, you know? Um, yeah, I was a consultant, I, could, I, I was making some money, like in, in my 30s and 40s, I made, you know, I made a lot of money, what, what other people would call a lot of money. Yeah. But I was not a business, you know what I mean? I was just. What, what do you mean by that? Well, I was just hustling. Just because you're hustling, I was, everything yeah. was a transaction. Yeah, everything, everything was a transaction to get money, pay the taxes, have a little bit of money left over. Everything was in a transaction. Yeah, and um, and this guy's like, well, you know, you're not a business. And I was like, I know, man, I know. Don't tell anybody. I know that. Okay, <laughs> like I knew it. And because because to me, a business is I can walk away from it; it'll still operate. I was I was a guy. I was no different than when I was thirty, just pounding doors. And which was good, which was good. And I think a lot of people, need to, you don't need to skip that spot either. Because once I put the two together, okay, I can pound the door. I can learn e-commerce. Um, I, can be, I can be a one product sale. I can sell to companies. Like today, we'll sell, we'll sell a product to a company for 80 grand on a, on a three to five year contract, 80 grand a year. Yeah. And I'll switch immediately and sell an $8 product online or I'll give something away for free to speaking to 4,000 people today in hopes that I can meet, you know, maybe 40 of them that I can do, have a partnership and a collaboration with in, in the future. They invest in assets of cash flow. Give me a drip, let me rip. Give me a little drip. Give me something every month. Give me something every quarter. Give me something to reward me, 3%, 4%, 10%. Give me something to reward me to have a 10x big bang at the end of the appreciation of the asset. Warren Buffett says three rules. Don't lose money. Two, don't remember number one, don't lose money. And number three, only invest in things that cash flow. You know, Warren Buffett, he's got a, he's a major player in, uh, at Apple now and it took him forever to get there. And the reason he finally invested in Apple was because he understood, finally understood the cash flow of the iTunes account. <laughs> it was crazy. That's when he made his big move. Every company he's ever invested in had positive cash flow. And cash flow enough that they could distribute cash flow. We gotta look at your vehicle. What vehicle are you in right now? Do you have any recurring revenue? Do you have any opportunities outside of what's going on right now? What are your assets and liabilities? If you're over 50 years old, you're just trying to figure out, man, what am I gonna do? Because look, time is critical now. You don't have a lot of time. You know that better than I do. You gotta figure this game out, okay? If you're committed, number one. Number two, we gotta look at the vehicle you're in. We gotta look at, do you have any other additional income or recurring income or repetitive income, passive income, opportunities, there's so many that exist in the world today. If you don't understand YouTube, LinkedIn, Instagram, 
all these things. Like I didn't understand any of this when I was 51 years old. I had no idea how to market myself. I had never branded myself. I'd never done video like this before. I didn't know if I did a video, what I was supposed to do the video on. I did not have a product lineup. I was in one tiny uh, vertical. Uh, I'd heard somebody say once, uh, the riches are in the niches and my niche was so tight. I wasn't right, I was wrong. Because I was dependent upon this many people. I had to serve them, satisfy them, kneel down to them, and kiss the ring every day. And I got tired. If you're tired of kneeling down, kissing the ring, begging, putting up with bull from customers, and, you, and you're, you're 50 years old, you're over 50 years old, and you're like, okay, I got to get recurring revenue. I got to get something that's indestructible. I got to figure out how to do this without spending a bunch of money. I can't disrupt my main flow right now. You got a job right now. You can't walk away from it. I get it. But you're running out of time. Okay, you got what? 10 years, 15 years, 20 years? You wanna start enjoying it, some of the money, some of the production? It is beyond my ima imagination. I imagine you can't even imagine flying private. It's beyond my imagination that, that, I'll, that I'm getting rid of a plane and picking up a, another one. So if I can do this, I'm telling you guys, you can do this. Every time you see a private plane or a yacht or somebody living the life, just remember, if they can do it, you can do it as long as you're committed to, if you find the right vehicle, just because you work hard does not mean you'll get it. You have to find the right vehicle. If you're in the wrong vehicle, you're in the wrong vehicle. Doesn't mean you need to quit your job right now. It does mean you, we need to figure out what the right vehicle is. And because of the internet, because of the access to the internet today, anybody, regardless of where you live, can figure out how to do this. 80, maybe 90%, maybe 95% without being a doomsdayer. 95% of the people in the United States of America, the wealthiest country on the planet, are suffering. No money, no freedom, no choices, can't leave their job, tied down, and they, most of those 95%, most of them, some of them are earning big wages, 250 grand, 80 grand, 90 grand, maybe you're in this group, 60 grand, 58,000, 78,000, 112,000, whatever number you're earning, if you look at the the, the, the money left over at the end of the year, end of the month, or end of the, the week, there's not a lot of money left over. 76% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. 55% of Americans have no money in a savings account, okay? 90% of all the wealth in this country is owned by about less than 10% of all the people in this country. Listen to what I just said. You and I have been doing something wrong. We are using information that is outdated and no longer efficient for the kind of economy we're in today. Got all kind of disruption going on. You gotta start thinking different about saving money, investing money, real estate, crypto, and how you, how you uh, do, do you go over uh, many, many investments or do you go hard on one? We need to look at what you have been taught about money that may be holding you back, that may not be the thing you need to be doing any longer. I'm here in Las Vegas right now. You know, when you walk in these casinos, almost everybody knows how to play blackjack. Almost everybody knows how to play the little games here. They even have books how to play the games. Uh, the guy gets a six, he's got a 16, and the dealer's got a six. He's like, I'm not gonna hit that card. And he sits there and he gets beat all night because he's playing by the book. I figured out two things. I figured out, oh shit, excuse the language. I've been doing everything wrong and thought it was right. I was doing exactly what the book said. Save your money, invest in mutual funds, plan for retirement, buy some life insurance. Um, what was the other one? Work hard. Oh yeah, you gotta work hard. And you do, by the way. That's not a myth. But I know a lot of people that are working hard that end up with nothing. Like my parents. My dad worked hard, he died at 52 years old. Heart blew up in his chest from stress and overwork. Probably for not taking care of himself enough because he was out there grinding, just pounding, pounding every day because he wanted to do one thing, take care of his family. Probably same thing you want to do. Then my mom was left to raise five kids and only had a little bucket of money sitting over there in a savings account. So she's clipping coupons, terrified to spend anything, scared of the, if the plumbing breaks, scared if the roofer comes over, scared, terrified every day to spend one penny because she knew she was depleting the account that would take care of the family. Look, if you're experiencing any of these same things today, don't feel bad about yourself. Like you're not, you're not like, oh, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with you is you have the wrong information. 
You got the wrong information. It's not because you're lazy. It's not because you're stupid. It's because you have the wrong data. You need to unlearn some sh You need to unlearn some stuff that mom and daddy and your teacher told you. Your mentor, your last guy, whoever you're listening to, if, if what you have now hadn't got you where you want to go, what you have now in your head might be keeping you from where you want to go. I started studying super successful people. Not mediocre successful people. Super successful people. Because prior to this, I had been studying anyone that had any level of success. Now, I grew up in the middle class. How many grew up in the middle class? Good. I grew up where we had bicycles. My mom had a car. We had gasoline in the car. We had food. I, had, I was uh, fed three meals a day. My dad died when I was 10 years old. My mother was there to take care of me. I came from a really good household. Okay, there was plenty of love. There was a lot of nurturing. There was plenty of food. There was something in the refrigerator at all times. There was some guidance. You understand what I'm saying? So the first thing I did was I started studying successful people and I discovered something at 25 years old when my life, when my life and my business weren't working well that, that, that super successful people was they, they used a different way to build their business than I was using. I was stuck mostly in a sales cycle from the age of 25 when I started my first company at 29 actually, till the age of 45, for those 20 years, I was stuck in a sales cycle. And what I studied about super successful people is they spent a lot of money, a lot of money marketing and advertising, okay? Now, my mom was telling me not to do this. My brothers, my sisters, the people surrounding me, the people I work with, were not spending money on marketing and advertising. The second thing the wealthy do, the millionaires, the self-made millionaires do, is they play get rich for sure. I don't know if you've ever heard this term. Uh, I coined this phrase years ago. I'm not interested in get rich quick. I got some buddies that try to teach those courses. Cringe when I hear them. I don't want to get rich quick. I want to get rich for sure. I've always wanted to get rich for sure. I'd like, I just don't, I don't really care how long it takes as long as I'm not old and dead, but I want to know that I'm getting rich for sure. I'm not, I'm not a shortcut guy. Uh, I'm not a gambler. I'm not, I'm not the guy that's going to throw, put it all on one, um, one color. I'm extremely, extremely conservative when it comes to investing uh, because I don't want to lose my money. Uh, my parents, both my parents uh, came up through a time when um, my mother was in food lines. And, and she told me that story so many times, dude. I, you know, I got scared that one day I'd be in a food line. So um, I don't want to get rich quick because I know that comes with the pain of busting out. Okay, And that might, by the way, keep me from being one of the wealthiest people in the world because I don't take these big chances. Uh, but if this if this is you, like you're thinking, yeah, I don't I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to I don't need the three week uh, thousand X return. I want to be able to invest my money in something. I get the tax write offs. I get the benefits. I get the cash flow, and uh, I get the long term appreciation. And that's what the wealthy do by by in masses. They don't they're not taking um, these crazy crazy chances. Everybody can do more, you know, yeah. and you don't know what you can do until you see other people doing big stuff. And, yeah. and, and that's why today, like we started this talking about in the past, I'd look up to people want to pull them down. Now I'm like, wow, dude, that's an inspiration. Yeah. And I look for people like all the way back to Jesus is an inspiration to me. Like he left his town. Yeah. You know, I've used that Jesus analogy, him leaving Bethlehem. Did he leave Bethlehem or Nazareth? Now there was went to Beth, uh, some, some, right? So I'm like, you know what? Nobody would know him if he didn't leave home. I've, I've moved from Lake Charles to Houston, Houston to San Diego, San Diego to LA, LA to Miami. I might move again. Every move's been good for me. Mm. So you got to leave your home. You got to leave your comfort. You know, you got to walk the path and you got to get a team. Yeah. You need, you can't do anything great by yourself. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I truly believe all of us, no matter where you are today, you can do, everybody can do 10 times more than you think you can. And before you get to 10X, you'll end up changing the goal to 10 times more. 
If I had one thing to do over again, I would be like, I would learn communication skills, speaking skills, debating skills. I should have taken a debating class because I really don't know how to debate. I just make people wrong, you know? So, uh, that, and that's not debating, <laughs> but I get away with it somehow, you know? Uh, but, but it doesn't work for most people. So people should, I would definitely go back at 18, back to your first question. I would go back and take debating classes. I would take, uh, communication classes. I'd probably learn how to code. I would definitely learn how, how these guys are creating funds. SPACs is a new thing. Um, hedge funds. I would learn how to write, uh, do surveys and find out, Hey, what is it people actually want? And I would learn how to read about money flows and, and, and people flows and the Internet and algorithms and all this fascinating stuff. But I would I would only do it for one reason, by the way, just so everybody's clear. OK, I would only do it so I can make a lot of money. What's the number one thing people should do if they want to double their income? So moving on to the should, should, should uh, you should sales get good at something, get good at something, yeah. you know, get good at something. Now. You got you got to get good at something. And you got to ask yourself if you're in the right vehicle. If you're yeah, an engineer, you always say that. Yeah, the vehicle, right? Yeah, the vehicle. Yeah. So, so let's say you're a photographer. Yeah. Okay. Because I know a guy right now. He, he's a photographer, and he's like, I want to make more money. Okay. Well, good. So, well, he's going to have to. He can only get so good as a photographer. Mm. Like, there's I mean, a ceiling on the income, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Like, you're going to have to go shoot a movie, dude. Like, everybody's got a ceiling where you you finally get to a price, and they're like, okay, I'm done. Nobody's going to buy from you. Yeah. So now what are you going to do to, to, to get your deal? you got to go sell something. You're going to have to sell some product mm -hmm. or some service. Mm -hmm. If you don't like to sell it, then you need to promote it so people buy it from you. So they just come buy it from you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you don't like sales, then you need to spend a bunch of money promoting so that people, oh, thank you, champ. Thank you. You need to promote it. Man, this looks good. <laughs> see, see, she brought She's me great. that. Yeah. She brought me that. So how do you get somebody to bring you something, mm -hmm. right? Well. You either get up and spend your own time to go get it, or you get people around you, little people around you that you pay $10, <laughs> make it five, make it five. She just earned some money. They know how to earn money with me, right? They earn money. Look, I didn't know what else to do. There was no social media when yeah. I was 30 years old. So today, if it's social media, I'm like, okay, what am I going to do? I need to find, if I want to, if I want to make sales, is, is the income, I want, I want income, I want income, I need mm -hmm. money, right? Mm -hmm. A kid, a kid, 18 year old kid today says, I want to know how to make passive income. He wants to stay home and earn money. Mm -hmm. I'm like, dude, you're skipping a step. You got to earn money first. Number one, you got to earn money. You got to earn it mm -hmm. or connect with it. So I got to either get you to give me money. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many times you'd do that yeah, yeah. before you'd be like, okay, what do I get? Okay. Then number two, I need to keep that money. Figure out, okay, how do I get that money to do something now? Okay. Now, a lot of people know number one, and, 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 a, and a handful of people know how to do number two. Mm. They get the money, but then they don't know what to do with the money. Mm. You got to get the money to have babies. Big tip for the wealthy, the, the not-so-secret secret, secret uh, they invest in assets that give them massive tax benefits using debt. Okay, number five is the game changer. It is the Mac Daddy wealth builder that I did not learn until I was about 50 years old. You can use debt to give you tax benefits and then leverage that into a asset class in your backyard where you live without creating anything uh, to create tremendous amounts of value for yourself, your family, and your household. The wealthy, the super wealthy know that they have to use good debt to create massive tax benefits so they actually get 100% of the money out of their assets without paying any taxes. This is a super tax loophole that the wealthy have been using for years. If you want to grow your business, learn to follow up. Follow up. Follow up way more than you ever imagined follow up. I'm talking 12 follow up calls or 25 follow up calls. I'm talking calling somebody every month or even twice a month. Long after they weren't interested, you would keep following up. Do you have a good product? Yes. Do you have a product people need? Yes. Do you have a service people need? Yes. Do you have a good company? Yes. Then learn to follow up. Nobody taught you guys how to follow up. In fact, you were taught not to. What were you taught? Don't bother people. You don't wanna bother anybody. Don't pester people, right or wrong, okay? You don't want to nag people. You don't want to beg for the business. 
But what happens in most cases, people just don't, they look like they don't care because they don't follow. Yo, we're rolling out of Cabo with family and friends. We got Elena, two girls growing up. We got Jared and Sandy back there. This is our last flight on our Gulfstream 550. Man, that plane has been so good to us. Wow. Sabrina, we did how many, what did we do? 20 countries, 19 countries? Yeah. In this bird back here. So good to us. It's getting it. ready to go home. It's going to go home and it's going to a new owner. Who knows what we get next time? What do y'all think I should hook up with? Because we need something, you know? Because we're going to, we're about to do a lot of traveling. London, we're coming to you, all UK. All the places we haven't been to yet, we're coming to you. Middle East, we are coming to you. Jared has got me on a schedule. It's so strict. Okay? We haven't done anything in Egypt. All of South America. Oh, my God. See, dude, Elena's been practicing her Spanish 450 days. She's been on it already. Uh, doing your Duolingo, right, Elena? 412 days. 412 days. See? And all, all she knows is that one. See, see, see. So, uh, yeah, so we're looking forward to coming to see you. Australia, we're coming back. Thailand, we're coming. Malaysia, we're coming back. Where Singapore. else are we coming? Singapore. Oh, for sure, Singapore. India, we come. Before. India! We have not been to India yet. We've got to come to India. Russia? So, look, we're going to probably have to get something a little bigger than the, the, than the beast, okay? I actually never called it the beast because I didn't feel good about calling it the beast because I knew... Whoa, what is that's that? A, that's, that's, a six, <laughs> that's a That's, that's, that's a beast eight. right there. That's eight. that's eight right there. That's 650 right there, right? Yeah. Man, maybe one day I can own a 650. I think that's got Italian, that's an Italian blunt. Who's XA? No, that must be Mexico. Yeah. So, uh, God, these things are beautiful. If you've ever wondered, because I know I did, if you've ever wondered how do people, what do they do to fly these planes? Look at this. I'm right underneath one of these beasts right now. This is, uh, I think this is a, this is a 450 right here. Gulfstream 450. Look at that. You know a family owns that plane? And they fly themselves probably from L.A. or San Francisco down to Mexico in Cabo. And then, you know, family owns that plane too. Now, the only asset class that will protect you during hyperinflation, there's a couple of them, but there's only one that cash flows. Gold, certainly. Silver, yes. Um, other, other asset classes that appreciate in value will get accelerated. Real estate, however, for the last couple thousand years, without exaggeration, has been the, the number one, the number one by a long shot asset class that will protect you and your family against inflation. This is something you guys really need to worry about. Uh, the uh, politicians are talking about inflation being a problem for the upper class. Look, inflation infect, uh, infects uh, like a virus, uh, everyone, okay? Inflation, Warren Buffett said inflation was like the invisible tax. If you don't like taxes, you're gonna hate inflation. We have not had inflation in this country in probably- Since the 80s. Since the 80s, like, so that's, uh, you know, ha over half of my lifetime, we have not had hyperinflation, particularly hyperinflation, where you're starting to get escalated rates of food, water prices, uh, gasoline prices, fuel prices, diesel prices, Look at home prices. Just in Miami, I'm in Miami this morning uh, going to this event. Beautiful Miami. These prices, in the first 10 months of 2021, these prices went up 19%. That is hyperinflation. That means your mortgage payment will go up almost 20%. That means your down payment will go up uh, if it's a if it's a million dollar house or $400,000 house, let's say it's a $400,000 house and you had to put $40,000 down uh, just January of last year, that down payment now is $50,000. So you got to get ready for this. Now, how do you protect yourself? One, you got to be aware of what inflation is. Number two, you got to know if I have money that's going down in value as assets go up, it takes more money now. This bag of money this bag of money will not basically, this was $100,000 in this bag, and because of the inflation in the last 12 months, this is now, I just basically took this much out of it. You understand? That's how inflation works. The bag was full, 
and now the bag is less full, okay, because of inflation. It's invisible, but it works in reverse, meaning I just simply need more of a bag. I probably need this bag and another 20% of this bag to buy the same products and services because of the printing of currency and because of inflation. It's not very complicated. And you don't need to figure it out. You just need to know, number one, it's here. Number two, I'm going to do something about it. You need to do something about it. And the thing that you can do about it is not a new thing, by the way, folks. This is not This is not a Bitcoin. This is not BitClout. This is not NFTs, NFTs, Ethereum. This is nothing. This is not the, the me meta metaverse. metaverse. <laughs> this is nothing to learn. Like, this is simply, I'm going to find an asset that cash flows a real property that cash flows where I protect my capital. Bigger is not better. I remember a guy named Phil told me this. He went bankrupt. And then he says, I just want to remind you, man, bigger is not better. I had the bowling alley. I had the big house. I had to die. And, I, I, and then he's like, bigger is not better, man. And I believed it. I bought it. And so I, I stayed small. Um, and later I realized that today I know bigger is definitely better. OK, and, and you just got to keep getting bigger. The problem with bigger is you can't get out of the game and you keep getting bigger and bigger. Right. You want to keep getting bigger and bigger and it keeps bringing on. You can't get out of the game because then you have obligations to other people. Now there's a lot of employees, but bigger is more fun. And it comes with more problems, but it comes with more fun, too. I will never give the bank money until I invest in my business. I'm never going to save money at Wells Fargo. Cash is trash, folks. How many were taught you were brought up cash is king? Yeah. It's garbage. It's pieces of paper. If you saw the stock, if you saw the dollar as a stock in the last 55 years, it's going down like this. The graph is straight down almost a 90% depreciation value. You would never invest in that stock. But what do you guys do? Work your ass off, trade time for money, take the money and save it so it gets depreciated. What does the bank do as soon as you give it to them? They call me up. Hey, Mr. Cardone, can we lend you some of these people's money? They're work, hardworking people. They were working their asses off on the weekends, trading time for money, and they came and gave us the money. It's, it's amazing these people do this over and over again. I'm like, please send it over. Once you and your business are doing well, by the way, you'll know. It's not even a question. If you're calling me up like, when should I start investing, Grant? If you're still asking that question, you don't have enough money. It will be so obvious to you. Your business is on banging. It's banging. 12 cylinders just banging, man. Listings coming in. Sales being made. People talking about you. Your freaking numbers are going like this. Everything's like straight up and vertical. Then you should invest in something where you cannot lose your money. What should you do with your money? Well, well, like saving money in a bank account is ridiculous. The only people that benefit yeah. is the bank. So wait, yeah. what do you do with the money then? You, 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 you use money. First thing people should invest in is themselves. Like, you, you know. Best thing is people hear that and they go, what does that mean, though? What do I do with the money? Go to, go to workshops, go to seminars, go to whatever you're good at, whatever you're doing. You're yeah. an astronaut, invest in yourself. If you're an athlete, invest in yourself. Don't spend money on belts Yeah, and looking good. Like Invest in your craft. You're a comedian, invest in your craft. And that means investing in your skills, a uh, 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 coach, a uh, uh, what, whatever, whatever, podcasts, yeah. whatever needs to get you known, right? And, right. Then, and then also in, in your branding and your marketing. Like, people have to know you, no matter how good you are. If I don't know you, it doesn't matter. Right, so you got to get out there. Yeah, how did, you, how did you guys run into me? How did I run into you? Yeah, how did you find out about me? Instagram. Good. I invested a lot of money making sure that people see that Instagram account, right? Right. So it, our energy, money and energy. Right. So uh, invest in yourself first to become great at whatever you're doing. Number two, start investing in your business if, that, if you hadn't done that already. And the third thing is start investing in things that'll pay you every month. So you buy, you buy a flow of income. This idea that it takes money to make money is not true. It's a myth. It's, it's, it's the number one reason why I did the show, the Discovery mm. Show, to debunk that on TV, that I didn't need any money at all. Uh, they, they offered me a hundred bucks. I'm like, just keep it, dude. Like, no, no, we got to give it to you. It's part of the show. And I'm like, I don't need the hundred. They're like, no, but you got to take the hundred. It's part of the show. The entire 90 days, I never touched the first hundred they gave me. And this was to prove to people, dude, you do not need money. Like, it's just, it's not true. You need money. You do need contacts. You need people. You need relationships. You need people. You need, people. You need the right people, though. The right people that are already in play. 
okay? Just because the guy's got money. I remember a, a, a billionaire friend of mine, uh, you know, he could buy a jet. And I said, hey, Bob, should I buy a jet? He said, you should, I shouldn't. Meaning Grant should because, and he's way wealthier than I am. He could have bought 40 of them. He's like, I don't have a place to go on mine. You, have a, you could use yours every day. So you, mm. you got to find somebody that's in place, somebody that not just has money, but somebody that wants to do more with their money. So you'll notice in the first uh, 10 days, I don't spend a hun- any money. I don't spend money on shelter, not on food, and not on water. Nothing. Then what I do is I end up accumulating assets. And it's unfortunate that the viewer doesn't see this. Within mm. five days, I have two vehicles. One was given to me by Discovery, <laughs> and the other one was a $40,000 Jeep that I basically used uh, from Ryan, this guy I met, and told him, I'm going to sell your Jeep. I'm going to drive it around town and put 10 miles a day on it, and I'm going to sell it. Well, that's a $43,000 asset. Uh, my truck was worth four grand. I still had my $100. I lived in a $46,000 RV that I was trying to sell. So, yeah. uh, and the, what, what's the other thing I did? And I picked up $10,000 to do in a 15% partnership in the equity of the upside of this guy's company. So literally in 10 days, wow. I was accumulating contacts that could get me equity. And the, and the important part of that story is, man, go get you some equity. You know, Jay-Z talks about this. You're getting, you, you know, so many of you young brothers are getting an advance while I'm picking up the equity. Showing up means showing up. It don't mean you got to the office. You understand? It doesn't mean you came to work. For me, showing up means I show up. I've been showing up since I was 25 years old, man. Before that, I wasn't showing up. I was showing off. I was acting a fool, being a fool. High school, I didn't show up. I went to class. I never showed up. My body went in the room. See, showing up doesn't mean you got there. Showing up means you got there, and then you showed up again, and then you showed up again, and then you showed up again. It means you show up for the class, you show up for the homework, you show up for the class, you show up for the homework, you show up for the test, you freaking get a perfect grade. It means you keep showing up to the next level. And I hear a lot of people talking about showing up. You know, showing up's not everything. Let me tell you something. Showing up, when you show up the right way, Johnny, you got to put your seatbelt on. When you show up the right way, when you show up the right way, showing up is 100% a success. To keep showing up. Showing up means you're looking for deeper levels to show up, to pay attention. That's what I do every day. Every day I come to work, I'm like, show up, man. Show up for every little problem. Show up for every little opportunity. Show up for every little, little new nuance, little angle, little particle, little movement. That's why I see all this stuff. Why is that not cleaned up? Why is this not cleaned up? Why did why somebody pick that up? Who's that new person here? Hey, you feeling all right today? How many times have I asked you that before? You all right today? I know it's the little things. It's simple. It costs nothing to do this. Show up. It costs you nothing. It makes all the difference. And it makes all the difference, man, showing up. You'll see things that no one else sees. And, and you know, the good news is anybody can do this. You just got to make a commitment to show up. The number one thing is you got to make a decision before you even take a step. What is it you want with wealth? Is it to just get by, simply pay the bills? You want to become a millionaire, a decamillionaire, a hectamillionaire, a billionaire? Which one you want to do? I've done every one of those. And I started with one thing, the dream. What was the dream for me? In the middle, in the very beginning, it was simply, man, I just want to pay my bills. And that was a mistake because I was thinking too small. So however high you set your goals and your targets is going to determine where you get. So most importantly, just set a number. Is it a million, 10 million, 100 million, a billion dollars? I'm greedy and I am, I am, I am very highly interested in my personal self-improvement because I know that's where it all starts. I have, to, I have to make me the most important thing in my life because other people can't get better if I don't. I would love to improve my communication skills. Clubhouse is like the amount of eloquence, the amount of people there that are able to see other people's viewpoints has been fascinating to me. So number one, I'd like to become a better communicator. Uh, number two, and I think I already am just from being on Clubhouse. Like, 
Clubhouse has been an incredible gift to me. Yeah, it's been fun. It's been fun to be in those rooms with you. Yeah, and, and so I've learned a lot about how to talk, how to listen uh, that I didn't know because of the two-way communication. You don't get that from, from Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, I don't get it from dropping a video on YouTube. Uh, number two is the collaboration. I want to collaborate with more people. Uh, number three, th- third thing I want to do, uh, you know, I mean, I need to work on my relationships, my, my personal relationships. Uh, could be a better husband, definitely a better husband. I've been, go- I've been running really fast. I wouldn't push him. I mean, I don't push my kids. I'm pushing me. So if my kids can learn from me pushing me, because I don't want anybody pushing me. You're, you're never going to push me as hard as I'll push me. You know, I had a manager when I was 29, 28 years old. He set a quota for me, and I started laughing at him. And he's like, what are you laughing about? I'm like, dude, how can you set my quota? How can you set a quota for me, dude? You, you don't even know your potential, much less mine. Because I'm the one that knew what I could be doing. I'm sitting there quietly as a salesperson thinking, I could come in two hours early. I got nothing to do. I was single. I was lonely, I had nothing to do. I could have gotten to work two hours early, I could have stayed four hours later. How can somebody that doesn't know what's going on for me set my potential? You're compromising location because of price. Buy the best assets you can buy, folks. I've been doing this 30 years, I bought, what are, what are we at right now, 10,000 units? I'll be at 12,000 units by the end of the year. I have bought and sold probably 15,000 apartments, four plus billion dollars worth I'm sharing with you from my heart. These are the mistakes I made. I bought too small. Number two, I, I compromised location over a little bit of money. Money is garbage, okay? The money I have in my pocket, I mean, let's face it, it's not worth a lot. It buys goods and services. It, it, it'll trade at Amazon. You can't even go to Neiman Marcus and drop the whole wad anymore. They won't take a, They won't take $2,000 in cash. They want to put it on a credit card, probably their credit card, okay? So you got to keep a lot of cash today. Here's some more cash. What can happen to this cash? Somebody could steal it. It could get burned. It could get lost. It could get misplaced. You can't misplace a great location. A great location where there's Starbucks and Whole Foods and maybe a Chipotle and there's traffic and there's jobs, you can never ever pay too much for a great location. If you learn to love the thing you hate, you might find a big gift in it. And for me, I didn't like sales, I hated it. I tried selling when I was 17 years old, lost a job. 18, I tried again part-time during the summer, lost the job. 19 years old, lost the job. I had had five experiences in sales and hated every one of them. All different industries, I just kept moving industries thinking, okay, it'll be different. This will be easy to sell. I hated sales, I hated talking to people. I I particularly hated the beginning, the rapport building. You know, I'm I'm not good at breaking ice. Like Ron Secco, he can talk to anybody. I can't do that. I can't go into a room, um, I I can speak to 35,000 people, but I can't go into a room and start warming it up. Uh, it's just I'm uncomfortable. So the, the point I'm trying to make is when I was 25, the only job I could get was a sales job. And I said, hey, you got to decide that you're going to get good at this, even if you hate it, yeah. because you can't lose another job. It would have been my sixth firing. And I'm like, I cannot lose another job. I did, by the way, get fired from that place. <laughs> But they never got rid of me because I kept selling stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so every time they'd fire me, I'd, be, I'd go back and sell something. They'd be like, okay, you stay, another, right, stay another day until, <laughs> until the next time you mess up something. So, you know, I went from hating sales to committing to it to becoming now known as like one of the greatest living salespeople on the planet. Yeah. So uh, like, in the things you hate, yeah. like where does the hate come from? Mm. Like the things that you hate. The things that just grind you out, like you're gonna just bug you, there's probably, if you just stay with it and look, just move to the side a little bit and look behind it, there might be some great. Number one biggest mistake in real estate is thinking too small. I know this is hard to think about, but uh, I got a friend right now, he's actually letting me use his plane today to fly to see the World Series first game, Astros versus Atlanta Blades. Let's go Astros, okay? I hope that doesn't turn you off, but uh, this guy that owns this plane, by the way, is a big real estate guy, massive real estate holdings, okay? It allows him to, to literally buy something this big, this is a Gulfstream 650, what is this, 65 million, 70 million dollars? Yeah. And my plane just got sold, 
I'm waiting for another plane to come as we take off here. Okay, this is gonna be big, man. This is gonna be a big takeoff, okay? Oh my God, I'm, I think they already got that first wheel up, okay? And uh, I was on my way to Houston for the World Series. Look at this, look at this takeoff. Beautiful, man, beautiful. So and I was booked on American Airlines, $500 to fly to Houston, 500 bucks back. And this guy calls up and said, hey, Grant, I don't want you flying on American. Use my plane. I know you're waiting on yours. Just take my bird, and uh, we'll figure it out later. So uh, super nice of him. But the point of that story is, one is, who do you know? And number two, how many people do you know in real estate that are successful in real estate? Because people that are successful in real estate, not just for the last decade, but for the last thousand years, uh, have been some of the wealthiest people on planet Earth. It's a secure, great investment. So number one biggest mistake, you're looking at one unit, you ought to be looking at 30 units. It is easier to buy 30 units. It's easier to make money on 30 units. It's easier to sell 30 units. It's easier to get a loan on 30 units than it is on one. And I know some of you are gonna disagree with me. I got all the haters I need out there. Please don't pile on. But they don't understand that when you buy one unit, you're not getting in the real estate game to buy one unit. If one unit's good, 30's better, 30 times better. If one unit's good and you can raise the rent $200, awesome, man, that's awesome. But what if you could raise the rent 30 times, uh, uh, $200 on 30 units? Just do the math. If you raise the rent 200, because real estate's about making money, it's about protecting your capital, it's about cash flow, it's about tax write-offs. But if you can buy one unit, ultimately it's about making money and you raise the rent $200, you're making $200 extra a month. If you could do that 30 times, you're making 6,000 a month, $72,000 a year, and that's when the game gets really, really super fun. Successful people are not seeking money, they're seeking freedom. I'm talking about the top of the food chain. You guys should be studying the top of the food chain. You should not be studying your buddies. Study the top of the food chain. They are available for study. Read everything they've done. If I read Warren Buffett, I take Warren from the beginning to the end, and I read everything he's done. I go, I go deep on one guy. I don't study a bunch of people. In the beginning, I'm like, is the dude about money? No, the guy was about freedom. What is freedom? Freedom, man. I get to do what I want, when I want, as long as I want. How I want, I get to say what I want to whoever I want, and I get to cut a customer out of my face if I want to. How many of you like to get rid of some of your customers? Like, get out of my office. Leave my office, I don't wanna do business with you. Okay, I wanna I want do business on my terms, not your terms, and not the marketplace's terms. And I don't want a competitor pushing on me. I wanna have enough flow coming in then I get to say, I don't want this business anymore. I want this business. Everybody with me? Okay, that's freedom. Financial freedom is not about money. The wealthy get wealthy not saving money. They invest their money. You're never going to create wealth ever. It is impossible to create wealth because you have a profession or because you're great at your job or career. Um, the only way to create true wealth, true wealth, is through investing. It is not through learning, it is not through watching videos, it is not by going to conferences. The number one best, most successful way, probably the only way to ever create real wealth, beyond millions of dollars, by the way, is uh, quit saving. Quit saving your money. This is what my parents did. They saved money. They didn't invest their money correctly. They didn't take money, leverage it into real investments because they were terrified of losing their money. I understand that. But there are asset classes out there where you could never lose your money. Many of you are buying assets without cash flow. Flippers, wholesalers, developers. Everything I've ever bought was developed by someone else. I've never flipped and I've never wholesaled. Why? Because I want to own that property, that great location. And what can make sure I own it, keep it, even through down cycles? Cash flow. You gotta get the cash flow, okay? I don't care if it's 2%, 3%, or 4%, 5%, 6%. I'd rather have a 3% cash flow on a great location than a 6% cash flow on an average location. What is the, the mindset you would share with anyone who's 40, 50, or 60 and be, uh, above who hasn't accomplished what they want yet? 
What would you say to them based on what you've learned after 50? You know, I used to tell myself I would never have anything to contribute to the world until I was 50. Because I'm very immature. I've always been described as a rough diamond, like, like rough around the edges, abrasive, not much of a filter, you know. I, I, I am, I mean, I know everything that people say negative about me, for every one thing every, the public has, I, I, know, I know every one of them. There's nothing anybody ever says about me that surprises me. I'm like, yeah, I know that. Like, you guys don't <laughs> think I know that? I, I live with me every day. Like, <laughs> I did, actually did not think I would have anything to contribute worthwhile until I was 50 years old. And uh, that was about the time the economic uh, collapse was, the Great Recession. And I was so lost in that financially. I didn't understand. I was actually being formed right there. I was being matured. I was being prepared for what, what, whatever's going on in my life right now. Uh, really, the, the, the creation of Grant Cardone has happened in the last 10 or 12 years, not, not before that. The Grant Cardone people know today is being, being developed right now. And I would just tell people that are older, like, dude, you're gonna have more energy later unless you don't. You're gonna have more genius later unless you refuse to. You're gonna have the ability to influence more unless you refuse to influence. And age has got nothing to do with the game. Like, nobody really knows my age. Like, uh, I was 50 years old when I was in Pueblo. I told everybody I'm 50 years old. My name's Lewis Curtis. I have two kids, beautiful two kids. I got a wife named Ava. Uh, had made up names for the kids. I had to make up all that story. And we live in LA and I hate it. Uh, because if I told people I was me in Miami, uh, if anybody went and searched it and started doing you know, images, like yeah. people do all that stuff today. I know. So um, I would just tell people, man, you look, I look at people that are 80 years old, I'm like, Shit, dude, I got 20 years left. You know how much damage I could do in 20 years? I know guys are in great shape. Uh, Dolly Parton, I mean, she's still hammering. She never did nine to five. She made some money on a song called nine to five. <laughs> you know, but she's been doing five to nine for, for years. So I just think people can get better if they want to, or they can get worse. You're either gonna decay, or you're gonna reboot yourself over and over again. Mm. I have. I have a couple of businesses this year we'll do $150 million. My real estate, we have $2.5 billion worth of real estate that we own that produces cash flow. Almost 10,000 units that, that 2,200 bucks a month. Do the math on that. Things are very good at our place. And I'm like, why don't you become a real estate agent? <laughs> okay, average real estate agent makes what? 25,000 bucks a year or something? 25,000 a year, okay, right? Something like that? It's sad. It's sad. And I want to talk to you about the finances right now, okay? Somebody said about not chasing squirrels. I think she was talking about chasing other opportunities. Is that right? Okay? But also, you guys need to think about not chasing squirrels that don't get your opportunity here. Because they're squirrels. They're gathering nuts. Like, oh, I can't, I can't, I don't want to put signs up. I'm like, dude, move on. You need people. I need people in my life that are heavily financially motivated. I hear everybody talking about their wives and their kids and, and oh my God, life is to be lived. You cannot live on this planet without money, folks. Okay? Nowhere can you go and buy something, the yacht, the experience, the weekend. I would look for people today that are financially motivated, that want to make more money and that understand that financial illiteracy is what's hanging people up from their dreams. You got people, hey, what do you want to do? Well, I want my time off. What are you gonna do with time off? You ain't got any money. <laughs> the hell, man? You wanna you want know the cause of depression? Too much time and too little money. Give me a job, give me a mission, give me something to do, give me possibility, give me a payoff. What do you look for when you're making a real estate investment? If it's anywhere in the world or in yeah, the US, yeah, like, yeah. what are the key things that I you're look for? I look for cash flow first. Cash flow. Number one, I look for cash flow because cash flow will allow me to keep a piece of property for his, through the cycles. So number one, I wanna be paid for something. I do not speculate on real estate. I've never lost a penny investing in real estate. I've been doing this for 35 years. Uh, number one, I want cash flow. Number two, I want a great location that's irreplaceable. I care less about the kitchens and the living rooms 
and the exterior, the paint, the roof. I yeah. care nothing about those. All those things can be changed. The location can never be changed. And the third thing I want to know when I buy a piece of real estate is, who can I sell this to? Exactly. Okay, so I should know who I'm exiting with. I should literally know who the next buyer will be before I purchase the property. 2008, 2009 was tough for you, just like it was for a lot of people. What was the lesson you learned then that prepared you for 2020? That you, when the recession hit, you said, okay, I know exactly what to do based on that pain in 2008. Yeah, well, I was so disappointed with myself then. Like, I had not put my family in a position to, to flourish and prosper because of suppression. You know, the tide goes out, you don't have a boat, shame on you. Right. And I didn't have a boat, dude. I, I mean, I had, I looked good. I looked good until it happened. You had a suit, you had the car. I yeah. thought I was good. I thought I was good, but I was too small. Small, small always gets hurt. And that, that was my big wake up call in 2008. I didn't have enough assets. I didn't have enough money. I, my business was too small. My customer base was too small. Uh, I was too reliant on too few verticals. This was the creation of 10X. I, I blame no one in 2008, nine and 10. I was like, okay, I'm in shit. I got myself in shit. This is not about the mortgage crisis. It's not about the builders. It's not about the strippers that got 17 loans. This is about me. I was in this pile of shit. I was in this fear. I, was, I let my family and myself down. Nothing was happening to me. And the most important thing is, I was not in a position to take advantage of it. That's the thing that pissed me off. Mm -hmm. And so I told Elena, I said, the next time this happens, dude, we're gonna freaking rock. And then COVID, it happened. And COVID, I was shooting a TV show and my company would have the best year it's ever had. Wow. I wasn't even here. Uh, <laughs> we, we, we bought more assets this year than we bought the year before it. We raised more money this year than the year before it. Um, you know, when, when, when Lehman collapsed in 2008, I had $50 million worth of debt. I told Elaine, I said, the next time this shit hits the fan, I'm going to have a billion dollars worth of debt. I know I told her, I, I said, I'm going to have a half a billion dollars worth of debt. We had a $1.2 billion worth of debt when COVID hit. I made a launch out. I was in a middle class family, raised by a single mother. We had a roof over our head, three meals a day. Uh, I had all the love I could do, but God, we had no money. And when you don't have money, you have fear. When you don't have the right vehicle, when you're in a vehicle, you're, you're working real estate and the most you can make is 3% and they're going to chop you. You know they're going to chop you. You know the seller's going to cut you up. 3%? You got me 2 million over asking and you want 3, 6% and I got to split it with my wife? <laughs> right? How many of you get chopped up? You're getting chopped up because you're not professional enough yet. When they're still asking for your fees, they are saying, hey, you are still not the player that I that deserves a full fee. So you've got to change your game now, man, particularly with inventory problems that you have right now. You're going to continue to have this inventory problem, folks. This is not going away. Housing prices over the next decade will not go down. They will go up. They will continue to go up. You're looking in a rear view mirror thinking about what, oh, shit, I should have bought everything. Because you should have, by the way. But you didn't, because you didn't sell enough to have enough to buy enough. Right? And you were sitting in the market. You were sitting in the market. How many times have you said, this is a good deal? How many of you in the room have said that before? This is a good deal. Why don't you buy it? Oh, because you can't. Because you didn't. You say, you didn't do enough to put yourself and your family in a situation where you could. And that's what happened to me in 2010. I had not done enough. I had three successful businesses. All three of them got cut off because of, of this mortgage thing. It took me a long time to understand that I had limiting beliefs, especially when I was doing well. So when I started making 80 and $90,000 a year in sales, this is many, many years ago, that's like $270,000 today. In an industry, by the way, where the top producers were 40,000. The limiting beliefs that I had at that time, and then even when I was making a million dollars a year, were the ones when I was making money. You know, when you're not making any money, it's clear you got a limiting belief.
you know, you're making 30 grand a year and that's all you can make no matter how good you are, no matter how much you smile, no matter how much service you provide, no matter how early you get there, how late you stay and you still make 30, you know there's a limiting belief because everything would indicate you should be paid more. When you're making a million dollars a year, you start thinking, I don't have any limiting beliefs. So the way to handle that is you need to study people that have created massive amounts. This is exactly what the 10X rule was about. Create massive amounts. In the Millionaire Booklet, I talked about earning money, keeping money, and multiplying money. This is what the great salespeople don't do. I know great salespeople that have never figured out how to multiply money. I know salespeople that are so good, like, I'm like, dude, that guy is probably a better salesperson than me, but he's still broke. He's broke because he made his money, didn't know how to keep it, or he kept it, didn't know how to multiply it. How much you earn is a limiting belief. How you keep it, where you keep it is a limiting belief. If you have money in the bank or equity in your house or you have a retirement account, you have a limiting belief about money. You're saving for a rainy day. You have equity in your home waiting to pay it off in 30 years, completely ridiculous. No, no high performance person needs to worry about paying their house off. You should rent where you live, own stuff that other people pay you for. Okay, and just rent where you live and be mobile. And the third thing is, you know, planning for having cash sit in an account, just sitting dead in an account or in your wall or underneath your bed or in your safe or the vault, wherever it is. Oh, but what about an emergency? If your money's in the bank and the internet goes down, you won't be getting your money out. There's no getting the money. If you got it underneath your bed, what, what, what for? Like some of you are storing money in gold. Gold is a limiting money belief. You're like, oh my God, the world's gonna come to an end. Gold will not help you out of the end of the world scenarios. You should make a whole list of all the limiting beliefs that you have around money. Number one, number two, you should most importantly make a list of limiting actions, not limiting beliefs, because your beliefs are turning into actions. How you save money, how you spend money, how you invest money. Diversification is also a limiting belief. Okay, now I know a lot of people recommend diversification, especially the people on Wall Street that benefit from you diversifying the most. They don't want you all eggs in one basket, but if you study the super wealthy, they took stakes. Once they got super rich, then they're like, okay, I own the railroads, the banks, and all the grocery stores. What was the first thing you ever sold when you were young, young Grant Cardone? The Cardone's? first thing that I, the young Grant Cardone, the first thing I ever sold was, uh, I think it was clothes. Was it clothes? Yeah, I think I was selling, I was in a clothing store and I earned 6% on a tie. Okay. And <laughs> socks and t-shirts. Um, and at that time, I think a tie cost like, I don't know, maybe 20 bucks. So I'd make like 12 cents or something. Wow. I was bumped up about it too. I was actually excited. I had minimum wage. Minimum wage back then was like a dollar eighty-five, mm. and I'd get a little, you know, seventy cent commission. Great. Yeah. What was your it first? It wasn't that great. What was your uh, first uh, real estate investment? My first real estate investment was a single family home. It was seventy-eight thousand dollars. I put three thousand dollars down. I thought it was a genius move. Mm. I used three thousand to buy seventy-eight thousand dollars. I, I I thought, okay, this is the best thing. I, I don't even see how this can be legal. Mm. And uh, you know that today would probably here because it's twenty percent down now would probably cost me fifteen thousand, but that's still a good deal. Yeah. Fifteen thousand dollars, I can leverage a eighty thousand dollar piece of real estate. Obviously, you can't buy anything here for eighty thousand. Um, more like a million dollars. Maybe out in the country. Can, yeah, yeah. But not in the city. You're looking well, at look, if, you know, millions around. Yeah, but, but, but if you could figure out, just if you could just make the transition, the biggest mistake I made in real estate was I didn't buy enough real estate. I should have bought more real estate. I should have bought it more aggressively. I should have paid more. I should have bought in better locations because I was thinking too small. I was thinking about the $3,000 I had rather than how could I go raise the money. Yeah. So, look, there's no shortage of money. There's a there's a shortage of, create, a shortage of creativity and commitment, but there's no shortage of money. So, you know, you got million dollar properties here. How can I go get gather some family members and some friends, put 200 grand together, and own a piece of real estate that we know is going to be worth more money in the future? Consumer debt is terrible debt. Suicide debt. That's that's credit card debt. Lamborghini that's... buying the Lamborghini on debt. Uh, like if you're going to buy a Lamborghini, at least it for 24 months. If you can't afford the 24 months, you can't afford the Lambo. Debt for clothes, Christmas gifts. I mean, it's stupid. It's stupid to borrow money for 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 this Santa Claus for your kids. I know I know people are going to hate that message. That's why so many people dislike. You know, they, they just don't like the well, truth. It's stupid.
it's stupid to go in debt. If you want to do it and uh, and for for fun or for whatever, then that's okay. But you may you're not investing in a potential greater future. No. Now, if I if I borrow money for Santa Claus, that's one thing. If I borrow money for to to invest to 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 buy to invest in in a piece of real estate for my kids, you know, I mean, I know which one's going to work. Yeah. If you just follow the tax write offs, you'll know the right thing to do. I can't write off Santa. I can write off the real estate. Right. So, um, yeah, bad debt is anything that I have to then pay the interest rate on. Good debt is I made an investment and my consumer or my tenant is going to pay my debt. That's powerful. So you're trying, to, you're trying to get more debt. You probably have more debt with me than you even know. Like, like because of the investments you've made with me, you have debt. You have good debt. Uh-huh. You just don't really know it. Your accountant does, though, because we're sending them the K-1 at the end of the year. That's why yeah. when we send you a check, you don't pay income on that check. That's nice. Very nice. <laughs> so you, you look at your return, but, you know, whatever I paid you last year, but that is non-taxable income to you. Because of the debt that we have. Because of the uh, debt. Everything else. Yeah, exactly. On the asset. Exactly. Three parts to the real estate game. Number one is the deal. I found me a good one right here. I'm in the Heights, one of the most desirable neighborhoods in all of the 713. Number one's the deal. Number two's the debt. You got to get a bank that's willing to lend on that. We're working on that right now. Debt market's insane right now. Now, and I'm still learning how to play that game, making connections, getting relationships with people. I've had money quoted to me at three and three, three and three quarters, all the way down to two point. Uh, seven five, and then last night got some money quoted to me at under two percent. Insane in the membrane changes everything in the game when you can get your debt right. The third part of the deal is cash, the equity. How much can you put down to buy the deal? So many of you out there would be looking at deals this size if you knew how to get the debt and the equity. But because you you think you're short on debt and equity, you reduce the deal size or the location or the quality of the asset. Most of you are chasing the debt and the equity when the truth is you should be chasing the deal because the right deal with the right story and the right location, the right traffic, the right renter, then it'll always bring the money. I'll tell you a story. I just did a deal in Boca Raton. I paid $70 million for the deal. And I knew, like I moved on this deal so fast, it was unbelievable because I knew that market, right? I didn't have to do a lot of research because I'd already done the research. So I still did the research, right? Because I'd already done the research, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go check out this restaurant right now, see how they're doing. And um, bought the deal, closed the deal. Very little due diligence, by the way. Just wham. Looking for reasons to buy the deal because I knew the location. We raised the rents $500 a month already. I've been in it 60 days. We just had one, maybe two rent two rent uh, leases come in at $1,000 more than they were before we bought them. And we got great plans for the property. We're going to do great stuff for the tenants there. Point is, when you raise the rents, man, guess what? You make the property better. You have more money to take care of your tenants. It improves the value of the property and gives you some momentum in that property. Uh, and then momentum to buy more deals. Point is... Dude, find the right deal in the right location at the right time and the right price. The debt and equity is I called the lender today. He's like, I paid $69 million. They're like, we'll give you $60 million worth of debt on that deal based on its performance just in the last 60 days since you took ownership. That is unbelievable. That means I only need $9 million to buy the deal, and I've already raised 20 Again, uh, know your location. Get some support around you. Uh, real estate is a team sport. Okay, it's about relationships. About the debts, about relationships. The equities, about relationships. The deals, are about relationships. Yeah. So, best advice I ever received. My mom said, "Hey, invest in yourself. You'll never lose." I have reminded myself of that so many times. Workshops I go to, uh, events that I attend, where I'm going as, as somebody to get educated. Okay, books that I've read. I'm like, it's not a waste of time. Uh, even if, even if you don't think you learn anything, it is not a waste of time. You think you think you haven't that it was a waste of time or you didn't learn anything because you hadn't used it yet. You may use that piece of data one day. And so, number one, anything you invest in time or 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 money in trying to improve yourself, you're not going to lose that. 
the beauty salon, the restaurant, the bar, the bar owner, um, the consultant, we've all had the experience of resenting our customers, starting not to like them. And it's because we become dependent upon them. We have too few. If we're resenting our customer, what is that saying about us? That we're not building our brand, that we're not growing, that we're not selling enough? Yeah, you, you didn't go, you didn't, you didn't build the top of your funnel out enough because this, this part of it's easy. Hmm. Even though you hate them, they never pay you money. This is the kind of stuff that goes on. They don't pay me enough. They always complain. They never use the product. No matter what I do for them, they bitch and complain. Okay? <laughs> They're never happy. Blah, blah, blah. Right? Well, right. the truth is, those are indications that you didn't build your, your customer base wide enough because you now resent them. Your resentment is an indication that you rely on them too much. And every time they complain to you, it reminds you, shit, I'm too reliant on too little. And, and we've all done it. We all do it. I've done it. Uh, right now, I'm doing it in my real estate. I told my guy, Ryan, the other day, I said, we're depending on this one guy too much. And he's like, why, why do you say that? Because I'm starting to resent him. So what's the first thing we should th do? What are the, what's the action steps after that when we resent our customers? You, you got you to you understand it's not about them. It's about you. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with them. You need to go wide. You need to go get more customers. If you resent Facebook, if, you, if, if Facebook pisses you off, it is because you are too reliant on Facebook. You know, it's, money's pretty simple, too. How do you get it? How do you keep it? How do you multiply it? Most people, most people spend their whole life just getting it. They never know how to keep it. Um, I mean, we don't even understand basic stuff. That currency is basically uh, comes from the word current, where something is moving. You don't actually get to... Have, own money. You don't own the money. The money is going to go some other place. And um, so, yeah, it's unfortunate, but we're taught nothing on that subject. How do you build wealth and stay happy at the same time? Well, number one is I don't think, you know, money will not make you happy. Like if you're not happy, you're not happy. So it'll make you jubilant and it'll make you giddy for a second. You know, if I dropped off a hundred million, you know, at your feet right now, uh, it would definitely change your attitude for a bit, but sooner or later you're coming back. You're, you're coming back to your 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 happiness level. I've never tried to get money to make me happy ever. I have never thought, oh, I'm going to go get X money, this much money, and I'm going to somehow be happier. I've never ever. I don't even know where this concept came from. The the connection between the two. You know, I go to the gym. I think I'm going to build muscle. I go to the water fountain. I think I'm going to quench a thirst. I go to a football game, I think I'm gonna be entertained. I get money, I never think about, okay, I'm gonna get 10 million bucks and I'm gonna suddenly happy. be happy. Mm. Now, I, never, I never even think about it like that. I'm gonna get 10 million and then I'm gonna invest it and I'm gonna pick up 30 million on the next swing and I'm gonna take 30 million and convert that to 90 million. I'm gonna take that and convert it into 270 and I'm gonna get to you know blah, 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 right? And then what am I gonna do with it? But Dude, I'm never thinking about it. It's going to make me happy. Your biggest expense in business, if you got a talent or you got a business, your biz, biggest expense is number one, your taxes. What the wealthy know is how to reduce their tax bill. That's what you don't know that you got to get a handle on. Reduce your tax bill to literally zero and beyond. That's right, beyond. That's where you would get tax refunds or credits going forward to reduce your income tax, federal and state to zero. How do you do that? I'm gonna show you. Anybody can do it, it's completely legal, and if you don't do it, <laughs> come on. You're just, not, you're just not following the tips of the wealthy. I didn't grow up with wealth. I grew up and had to figure out how to take my talent, increase my income, reduce my tax bill, and then get my money to work for me harder than I worked for my damn money. The goal is to take your earnings, reduce it to zero. Still have the money, but take the money and invest it. So let's say you're earning $2 million a year. If you live in New York City, $1 million of that is going to the IRS. That means you gotta figure out how to live on $1 million and if you're a ball player, out of that came 200 grand for an agent, another 200 grand probably for a manager, 
and you're having to live on 800,000. If you buy a house for your mother, you're freaking broke again. So I'm gonna show you how to play the game. You earn two million, okay? Live on as little of this money as you can in the beginning. Do not spend earned income. Don't spend it. What you do is you invest it and use it in a second business and or real property. So let's say I take 200 million, the state's gonna take, you're still gonna have your $400,000 go to agents and managers. You got $1.6 million. I want you to invest as much of that $1.6 million into real property. Real property will buy you about $4.8 million worth of, in this case, real estate. That $4.8 million worth of real estate, because it's got real property, $4.8 million, for instance, in a deal that I'm doing right now, will provide you with $2.4 million worth of depreciation that reduces this tax bill of 1.6 after your managers, these are expenses, to negative $800,000 that can be CF carry forward into future years. That means next year, if you earn $2 million, you're walking into that year with an $800,000 credit against your income. Now you need to check with your tax attorney. You need to check with your accountant. You need to check with your manager and your agent, but I'll promise you all four of them are gonna tell you this guy's onto something. Get your earned income. Earned income needs to be zero and passive income, I need to invest in a new whiteboard. Your passive income of the, what did we say? $1.6 million that we invested that we have left over. We, we literally, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you literally, no watches, no houses in the beginning, okay? Don't spend any money on the stuff. No Ferraris, take the 1.6, leverage it, It'll buy $4.8 million worth of real property. Okay, you want to stay focused on your baseball, your basketball, your rap, and you want to focus on your business. Or maybe you want to invest this money back in your business and zero out, okay? You want to reinvest in furniture, equipment, uh, if you're a musician, into uh, equipment, touring, anything to do with your business to grow your business. Literally get your earned income to be zero. The tax bill on zero is zero. 61% of all citizens in the United States last year made no contribution to the federal income taxes. Your job is to make sure that you take your earned income because you've got a lot of talent, reinvest that money, okay, so that you can be better talent and or prepare for transition when you no longer have that talent. So this $1.6 million of earned income after your agent and your manager, you would invest and leverage three to four times buy $4.8 million worth of real estate that would give you $2.4 million worth of depreciation in the first year. It's a little complicated now. This is called accelerated depreciation. But this is the game. This is the game that the wealthy know how to use and that's why they tend to use all their earned income, okay? Some of the biggest players in the world, they pay themselves zero, $1 a year. I think Mark Zuckerberg makes $1 a year, but he gets stock options, real property, this $2.4 million of depreciation you get in 2021, if you use it all, you'll get it again in 22. If you don't use it all, you'll get it again in 2023, and you're gonna to continue to do this every year, okay? I'm gonna to continue to do the same mechanism every year, reinvesting earned income, okay? So stay with me here, okay? Watch what's gonna happen. This $4.8 million worth of real estate, remember this, it's in the box. You own that, that's your position, okay? This $1.6 million that you invested should provide you with about $90,000 a year in income. Passive income, okay? That's in year one. If you do this again in year two, it's gonna get you another $90,000 a year in passive income. That's 180 grand by year two. But in year two, you now have $9.6 million where the real estate, real property that should be appreciating in value, providing you and your family with passive income. Now, now we're at about $15,000 a month in passive income, and you're starting to prepare third year, fourth year, fifth year. Now you're at $75,000 a month in passive income. You're gonna exit your career because, look, you got five years, maybe at max, 
ball players, artists. You don't have forever. You're not going to be a 35 year baseball player or basketball player. So if you start multiplying these years, in year two, I'm at 180,000. In year four, I'm at 360. In year eight, I'm at 700 grand in passive income per year. And that is not counting the value of the real property, which in this case, if I can take this out eight years, if you could duplicate this every year and not get a pay raise every year, eight years, eight times, if we did this every year, $4.8 million, you've paid no taxes for eight years in a perfect situation. And that would be $38,400,000 worth of real estate that is going up in value every year. If this just goes up 3% a year, I could take this out and I'd say in the next 10 to 15 years, you'll have $100 million worth of real estate, throwing out passive income. Most of the passive income is now not taxed at the highest rates. It's, it, it's somewhere as low as 19% a year where you're paying 48 to 63, depending on whether you live in LA or New York or one of these crazy states. Happiness for me comes from doing Personally, stuff. Personally, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it comes yeah. from accomplishing things. Like I experience my happiness when, when I accomplish something I'm proud of. So when we do a conference and I walk away and I'm thrilled at the event we put on, the quality, the lights, you know, that feels good. You know, when, when my, the people around me are happy, when I look around, when I'm proud of who I'm being and doing every day, you know, that makes me happy. Seeing my kids, my kids are, I'm so proud of my kids. They're such a, you know, a validation that I'm a good guy. When I can't see the good guy mm -hmm. in me, I can look at Sabrina and Scarlett and say, hey, dude, you got to be a good guy to produce those. When I really started learning from the, the, the in the beginning, what, what you learn is you're learning from the master. You know, and and so I'm I'm duplicating and emulating. Then at some point you cross over and you become the master. Mm. And and if if you're a guy like me, I'm always looking to improve everything. I'm looking for another little tweak, another little twist. You and I did that with the podcast. I'm looking for that that next thing all the time. How to make something just a little better, uh, a little faster. And so at some point, I kept studying this guy until I, I was able. In the beginning, I didn't challenge anything. I used, I duplicated, mm. me, I got Let me results. follow the script that I, that I learned. Let me use exactly what he's telling me to do. Do it. I, whatever, whatever I heard, I'm going to be like, I'm going to make that work. That's going to be my stable datum. And once I, could re once I could trust that, then I could build on top of it. I never yeah butted anything. Uh, I got a better way in the beginning. Dude, until I got the results, over and over, consistent results, then I started be, Then I started teaching it to other people, then I started learning angles. You kind of alluded to like your, your, your belief system, your spirituality. What is that belief? Really? I mean, like just, you know, can uh, you put it in the words? Yeah, I believe that I'm a spiritual being, and you know, and, 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 and I'm in a body, and, and, but, 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 but I'm not a body, I'm not a brain, I'm not a piece of meat, I'm not bones, I'm not 5'8", I'm not 170 pounds. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm beyond time and, and energy and measurable units. So I'm not, I'm not really Grant. That's my name that was given to, my, given to me. Mm. The, these things that I've done, the cars that I drive, it's just stuff. Like the, the, the Undercover Billionaire was an extremely spiritually liberating I adventure for me. Really? How so? Because I lost everything. I didn't have my money, didn't have the roles, didn't have the G63, didn't have the Gulfstream, didn't have my name, dude, didn't have my social media, you know, didn't have my hair, didn't have my, my, my goodies, you know, I didn't have 150 people on my team, I didn't have, it was me. And I'm like, damn, dude, like, I don't need anything. Yeah. I'm in a new environment where nobody knows me. And like, it was so empowering because I'm like, I am truly, like I am capable of taking care of myself without money, without credit cards, with just communication, you know? Mm. I think even in success, some people will luck up, right? I mean, the right way. They don't know, right they don't know. I 100% I agree with what you're saying. They, but they, like they, and they wonder, can I do it again? Yeah. There's that doubt, could I do it again? And you know, when, the, when Discovery went to help me out a little bit, like, cause they're producing a show, yeah. like let's keep it real. It's, I'm like, I don't want your help. And they're like, no, no, we got a, we got a meeting for you with so-and-so. I don't want it. Because for you, this ain't about a show. Throw it in the trash. I don't want it. And they're like, well, no, they, they, it's going to be good TV. I cannot take your help. And they're like, 
why? We're trying to help you. I'm like, yeah, but you don't understand. Once I take your help, I can't help me. Mm. Once you help me, then I become reliant on your help. Tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and say, can you help me? Three days from now I'm gonna be like, hey, why aren't y'all helping me? Like, like I, become, I become disabled. Money follows attention. When I get enough attention, money will follow it. If I can get enough people to listen to me, somebody will say, hey, I want to sponsor an ad because there's so many people. I just did a deal this weekend. It took like that long because of my audience. I want to give you this much money and I want to give you options in my company. And I'm just going to cross my fingers and hope good stuff happens. But he sees me interacting with all these people and converting people. Right. So money follows attention. If I can get really bright over here, money will go to that. If it's a good cause, if it's a bad cause, it's not going to work. OK, but what happens is the, 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 the attention wanes it goes away. if you can spike the money game, the money, the attention will follow again. Uh, people pay a lot of money to be in the Super Bowl or big soccer game. Right. Because there's a lot of people there. So if you could learn how about algorithms, getting eyeballs, keeping eyeballs, surveys, learning how to keep people's attention, man, you're going to you're going to be uh, unbelievable. And it won't matter how old you are, by the way. Michelangelo. Mm -hmm. Okay, Michelangelo. He didn't want to pope. Uh, he didn't want to paint the Sixteen Chapel, yeah. right? Dude, the 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 po the the, uh, the the Pope said, "Yeah, I understand. You don't want to, bro. Start painting." <laughs> Look what he did. Yeah. yeah. Right. So now, I don't know if that's you know. I'm just saying, like, I know artists that do what they love. They can't even feed themselves. Mm. You know, they, they, they love their they love their wife, too, or they love their husband, but dude, you can't take care of them. You love your parents, but you can't take care of them. So, so it's, it's just not true. If you just love something, if you only do the things you love, there might not even be any money in it. Like, you could love horses, but you should have lived, like, maybe 1,400 years ago. <laughs> yeah. And, and yeah. so, falconry, we had a falconry guy out here yesterday teaching us about the birds and the history of it. Two hours he spent with us. It was freaking unbelievable. You know, but you know, it's a very niche. Yeah, thing, right. Yeah, you, you know, fourteen hundred years ago, everybody had a bird. Yeah, you know that that was your that was the Lamborghini of the day. Today, that's probably not. You could love it, but yeah. you're not going to feed your family with it. You got to commit first. When you know something's right, folks, commit, commit, go all in on the deal. Nobody knows what you're what you're up to. Nobody knows what's going on inside me. I called my mom that night and I said, I met my wife today. And she's like, well, have y'all been out? Where did y'all go? What did you do? I said, no, she hates me. <laughs> and she's like, she hates you. Uh, Grant, it takes two. And this is what I knew from being in business. And if you're taking notes, it might be worthwhile. It does not take two to tango. It does not take two to make a marriage. And it does not take a buyer and a seller. What it takes is you. It needs to be you first. You have to decide they're selling the house and you got to decide that they're buying the house before any house makes a transaction. I had to decide that she was going to be the girl before she could see that I was going to be the guy. You guys with me? All right. 26 phone calls. All of them were like, hey, how you doing? You know, I didn't mention that she never calls me back. I didn't mention that she was breaking my heart every time she didn't call me. I didn't mention the fact that her best friend said I was too short. Okay, you guys know what all your objections are, don't you? Like her, her a friend said, "You're too short." I said, "Just tell me what the real deal is. I got to know what the objection is. I cannot handle the unspoken objection. What is the real deal, Grant? You're too short." I said, "Okay, what else? What else you got? Uh, you're not a Hollywood guy. She, she's she's an actress. I wasn't in Hollywood. I'm not an actor. Okay, good. What else? You're a businessman. She thinks you're too conservative. Okay, what else? What else you got? Well, you don't have a prison record." You don't have a prison record, no tattoos. She liked bad boys, okay? How many ladies here like the bad boys? Just be honest, okay? Be honest. The lady over here is like, yes, I love them, okay? So, so I just continue to pursue her because like somebody said earlier, sometimes people change. How many of your room have changed? How many of your room have changed? Exactly, you're gonna keep changing too. Some of you you're not gonna like. So, so. I pursued her until one day, because I know this, okay, and you might want to keep this in your collection of how you handle uh, discouragement along the way. When you get a no, would you agree that no is a version of yes? How many would agree with that? Dude, look, I mean, think about it. What's the opposite of yes? What's the opposite of no? What's in between? Maybe. So I always tell people when they tell me no, I'm like, don't say no. 
Say maybe. Okay, just say maybe. Oh, well, maybe, Grant, maybe, but not right now. Excellent, because I know no's can turn into yeses. I said no to a lot of things in life and then done them. You've walked into a casino before. I am not gambling tonight. I will not gamble. You came down to Cabo. I am not drinking while I'm here. Okay, you, some of you came down. No enriched bread while I'm here. No chips, no guacamole, nothing, okay? And as soon as you got down here, you're just like freaking hitting shots, eating guacamole, slamming it in your face, right? So how do you get from no to yes? Just show up in Cabo. It's a maybe, right? How do you get somebody to say, go, go from not selling their house to yes, I will? Get to a maybe and then follow them up. I actually almost threw away what I had learned and created this new thing called Information Assisted Selling. Information Assisted Selling. Where I started leading with what people wanted rather than this guy kind of hid. It was the old school, hide it. Don't you know, avoid the price, bring it up later. And that's where I really started accelerating everything, giving people the information up front, allowing you to understand how much this watch or ring was or car was. Before you even asked about it, I'd tell you it's 58000 Right away. So you wouldn't wait to the very end. You'd say, here's everything. Yeah, so everything. look, look if, you're, if you're shopping for a car or a watch or a ring or a, a coaching program, whatever it is, you, you probably want to know how much it is. I know I would. This, this particular product's 58000 It would require about you know $2,500 down. Your payments would be about five fifty a month. Um, let's be sure you're on the right product. You see, I've already... I, I got the va- the value proposition, the money. I got you thinking about mm. money right now. I want you thinking about money so that when I show the product, you can start making sense of it because I can't convince you that it's worth it. Mm. You have to so convince you, you. Yeah. Okay, I can build value, but you, the buyer is the buyer. I can't be the buyer. I can only help the buyer make sense of it. I've somehow figured out uh, just over time that, that, that I keep adding these little companies. And I didn't know this, it was just kind of a mistake, but all I was looking for is I didn't want to depend on one flow of anything, okay? This was the first company, this was me. I was out selling stuff, picking up money, okay? Next thing I did was I, I had a partnership with a guy right here uh, called Cardone, the Cardone Group. It's in Orlando, Florida. It's been a partnership for 25 years. Guy paid me a royalty to use my name. It was passive income. I gave him a majority of the company. He sat there for 25 years and went, pumped his deal, used my material, okay? And then we created a third company. This was the real estate. I started investing in real estate. I started buying real estate, provided me with a third flow of income. Now, <clears throat> what happened was I got fat right here and I got, uh, what's the word? Complacent. Like, okay, I'm good. Started playing golf three times a week. Everything's good. Um, the sh- you know, I'm doing great. I'm Alan. Okay. And, 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 then, <laughs> and then, and then, and then, and then, and then 2010 came, 2008 came. I was like, it just sl- took the little three circles. I didn't have the fourth circle, the fifth circle, the sixth circle, the seventh circle. I didn't have all these, I didn't have product lineups. How many of you have Cardone U here? Let me just see a hand. Didn't exist, that product. Let me see a hand if you have Cardone University. Okay, beautiful, man. Look at the penetration. Unbelievable. Like, like you, if you, want, if you want customer retention, get saturation. Don't make people happy. Make sure they buy your product. I'm not interested in making people happy. I'm interested in having people on my product. Some people you can't make happy. It's impossible, they're not happy people, all right? So 2010 comes, crushes me. I went back to selling, working on that business right there and buying more real estate and then creating more companies, okay? So that I can start bringing good people in. You understand, you gotta gotta keep expanding. You cannot be dependent upon one thing because that one thing can go away. Everybody agree with that? One ad, one promotion, one person, one product, one of anything. Once you be the greatest YouTuber in the world, the greatest skateboarder in the world, do like something that's real. Don't be a liar. Everybody's going to know it. And the higher the food, higher up you go in the food chain, the, the harder it is to trick people. I don't know if I was 15 years old today, I'd be probably, I'd probably be teaching people. I'd, I, first, I'd go after the kid market, which really is a parent market. 
I talked to parents and I'd probably create a YouTube channel about uh, how parents, uh, how kids can, parents can get their kids to, to learn faster. And, and, you know, maybe come up with some tricks and hacks and eBooks and courses to create a big audience. I don't know that I'd sell anything in the beginning. Maybe I would, but but I need to create a big audience. So then later someone, either someone else or myself can sell something to them. But you, look, if it, if it doesn't include an audience, you don't have a business. So I think the first thing people need to do is figure out how to create an audience. Hey, it's been said, it's been said by people for thousands of years. What you thinketh is what you getteth. Look behind me and you will see dreams being made into reality. Imagine that back here in London, uh, I don't know, a thousand years ago, 800 years ago, I don't actually know my history that well. None of this existed. Somebody dreamed about it. Somebody probably thought about, wow, one day we'll have a village there. One day we'll have a city there. So today I want to talk to you about, in this video, I want to talk to you about your dreams, what you're thinking about, what are you imagining? I imagine, I make up in my mind that somebody thought about a little small township not ever imagining that one day there would be towers and glass and steel and spheres and, oh my gosh, a city with, what, 20 million people in it, literally where all the money in the universe, all the money on this planet moves through this city. The highly successful people dream, they imagine, they spend time literally writing out what their future might look like. Now I'm not talking about, when I talk about dreaming in this segment, I'm not talking about when you sleep and dream. I'm not talking about nightmares. I'm not talking about daydreaming. I'm talking about you envisioning what your future might be like. When you see other people and you're like, God, I wish I could do that, or I wish I could have that. Other people, if you speak about that out loud, they're, they're going to try to talk you out of it. They're gonna tell you things like, oh, that's too much and that's ridiculous. I thought, oh, I'm gonna dream. People are gonna try to talk me out of it because I had people trying to talk me out of real estate being on stage, speaking in front of tens of thousands of people, running my own events, uh, creating millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in net worth. I had people trying to talk me out of that because I thought that they were jealous or envious or that they're like, okay, if Grant gets it, I can't have it. But the truth is, most of the people that were trying to talk me out of my dreams and my visualizations and me spending time on actually imagining what I could achieve, they weren't trying to talk me out of it because they couldn't have it. They were trying to talk me out of it because they quit. Okay, it's crazy. Look, it's not true when somebody tells you you can't have everything you want. Look at this. Look behind me. Look at the ships. Look at the water. Look at the river, okay? Look at the, the commerce. Look at the monetization that's happening back here. The new buildings that are being built. The, 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 the glass and the steel and buildings going up way higher than anybody ever imagined possible. Focus on your dreams. The highly successful people do this. They think about what is possible and then they get themselves around other people that are dreaming. You can't just dream on your own. You gotta get around other people that actually allow your dream to breathe and helps you with your imagination. You can't really paint, okay, or create art in a vacuum. You need ideas. You need to see what other people are thinking and doing in order to see what you could imagine or put down on paper. Look, the fact is you're gonna get what you focus on. You're getting it right now. Whatever you have today is what you focused on, thought about in your mind, activated in real life, and then reinforced on a daily basis. If you're in poverty today, it's because you probably grew up in poverty, thought about poverty, think you're only poverty, think that you can only have poverty, and yes, guess what? That's what you had. Bill Gates said, if you're born poor, it's not your fault. If you stay poor, yes, it is your fault that is. See, this is already taking place in your life. Your, your dreams, if you take responsibility, your dreams, if you're willing to take full responsibility for what you have right now, hey, the fact is what you've been dreaming, daydreaming, night dreaming, work dreaming, thinking about, what you've been talking about, what you've been focusing on throughout your 24 hour period each day is what you're getting. Look, no person's happy without a goal. No person's gonna be happy if they're not working on being happy. People that have faith in the ability to reach a goal, people that have faith in the ability to win, to reach a goal, to hit a milestone, to achieve something, those people are happy. 
So it's not just dreaming, it's like going to work every day and saying, hey, I have a dream, I have a goal, I have a target, and I wanna achieve that, and I'm gonna do whatever it takes to make sure I do achieve that. Okay, math and money. Math and money. Math and money. How old are you? I'll be nine in three days. Nine in three days. Okay, yeah. math and money. So I'm gonna give you adding, subtracting. You know how to do both of those, right? Yes. And I'm gonna do multiplying. Oh God. Okay, now which of these three are the most important? I think more. When it comes to money. When it comes to money, let me show you. One plus one, one, plus one. Or, or two, two plus one equals what? Three. Okay, good. Two minus one equals? One. One. So we got three, one. Two times three equals what? Wait, that's simple. Um, two times six. three. Yes, okay. So which one of these is the most powerful when it comes to money? I think multiply. Yes, why would that be? Because if you have if you know how to multiply, right? And yeah. you have a dollar, right? Yeah. And you can you're able to multiply that into two dollars, and they can multiply that two dollars into eighty hundred million thousand dollars. Whoa, 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 whoa. We can get there faster, right? Okay, so watch. I'm gonna give you a little I'm gonna give you a little drill here okay. to show you the power of multiplying. Add, add, subtract, subtract, multiply. Multiply. Okay, we're gonna use the same numbers every time. Two okay. plus two. Two plus two, four. Two minus two. Two minus two, one. Oh wait, that's zero. <laughs> okay, that's four. Zero. Two plus two is four. Yeah, and then two, two minus, minus two is zero. And two times two. Two times two. It's four. Let's do this. Let's do this. We're gonna do another because we love tens, right? Okay. okay, we're gonna take the number ten because I have it on my hat. Ten X. Wait, no. Now you have the number ten on your hat. Okay, ten, and we're gonna do ten plus ten. Ten, ten minus ten. Zero. And ten times ten. hundred. So, so watch, 10 plus 10 is how much? 10 plus 10 is 20. 20. 10 minus 10? Zero. 10 times 10? 100. Now we're using the same numbers, but notice the multiplier, the number gets bigger a lot faster than the other two. Yeah. And so what'd you learn from this exercise? That we need to, that if you multiply. Subtracting doesn't help you. Subtract, no, you gotta just get Okay, no no subtracting. No reason to learn this in school, kids. Subtract. I protest. You know, you know when people subtract stuff, what they're doing is they're like, okay, I'm going to go to the store, I'm going to spend this, I'm going to budget my money. They're using subtracting yeah. to determine how much money they can spend. If you add, it's obviously going to be less than multiplying because multiplying, you're timesing the number, so then it's obviously more because, like, 10 plus 2 is going to be... 12. 12, but 10 times two. 10 times 2 is going to be 20, so then So it's multiplying happens more. faster. Yeah. And you're amazing. Okay? I know. So when it comes to money, you want to add, subtract, or multiply? You want to multiply mainly and then use the other two for pesky things. Like, pesky things. Like stuff that's not needed. You're awesome, buddy. Okay? So now what I have to do is I got to figure out how to go multiply my friends and my money, money so I can get Beyonce to come to the 10X okay, book. Okay, yes. Friends. friends. You can multiply friends. So rather than adding one friend, you could add 10. Multiply. I'm just going to write it down. Multiply my friends. Money. Multiply my money. Good. Multiply my influence. You know how to spell influence? No. I'm just going to write it down. I-N-I-N-F-L-U-E-N-C-E. Influence multiply multiple. my power, power. <clears throat> Just and, like and help more people. Because if I can maybe, maybe I can help Beyonce or Dolly Parton or who else? Uh, Adriana. Or, her name is I don't Ariana think, Grande. Ariana, sorry Just Ariana. Just remember her by the ponytail. Okay, maybe Briny Heine can get Ariana. <laughs> you like Briny Heine? Okay, all right, so, okay, if I can't get Beyonce, okay. and I can't get Adele, can't get Adele, and I can't get... I think Jimmy Fallon will do it. I can't get a Ariana. Ariana. Ariana, okay, okay. and I can't get, who else did you want? Jimmy. Jolly Parton. Jolly Parton and Jimmy. Jimmy Fallon. Jimmy Fallon. Who else? Who else? Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart. This is the list. I can get Kevin. Them. You can get Kevin. I believe okay. in Kevin. I already had Kevin. Okay. I know, I want Kevin I, again. You want Kevin again? You love Kevin, huh? Kevin's cool. Um, who else? Because he's almost my height. Who else? <laughs> I'm funny. sorry, Kevin. Okay, who else you want? Um, what about The Rock? 
Yes, The Rock. Okay, what about... Give me Jimmy that. Fallon can bring Ariana Grande. Okay. Um, I either want Beyonce or Adele. Okay, either one or the one. other, not both of them together. I mean, yeah, you can choose. I mean, okay. I'll be perfectly happy with all of them, but... Okay. Um, and then Ariana... Wait, I already said Ariana. Yeah, yeah. And then... Dolly Parton? Dolly Parton, and I'll be happy. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'm going to invite one of those people, or more. Or, or, okay. But, and then Kevin Hart has But I need some, huh? And then Kevin Hart. And Kevin Hart, you want and Kevin Hart again? Yes. Or maybe he has Shorty. Look, look, now we're best friends. Okay. Zac Efron. No, you know who I don't Joe Rogan is? is? I want Zac Efron. Oh, Zac? You want Zac Efron? Okay. All right, well, you did your math class, so yeah, I'm going to see what Zac I can Efron. do to get one of, or two of these people. Okay. Okay. Because you made it this far in a video, I want to celebrate you. Most people start and don't finish. Most people never actually follow through. Most people say they want something, but they don't ever do the work to actually get it. But you are different. You are special. Believe Nation, you made it here all the way to the end, and I love you. So it's a special celebration if you put a hashtag believe down in the comments below on this video, I will showcase you and celebrate you somewhere on the screen in a future video because you are awesome. If you want some amazing Warren Buffett motivation, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe and I'll see you there. Look for the job that you would take if you didn't need a job. I mean, you know, don't sleepwalk through life and don't, don't say it's all gonna be great. You know, I'll, I'll do this and I'll do that. And you know, I'm just marking time to get to be older.